afternoon, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Dr. Yung Mahadio. Uh, we are holding this uh, special edition, as uh, Kevin will, uh, just said there, uh, the Yung. It's a snap um, uh, elections watch at this point in time. And let's get right down to it. Uh, we're going to put uh, the welcome to everybody who's joined us uh, here right now and get right down into it. That there is uh, or there are rumors about an injunction being granted uh, by the courts to stop Keith Lowenfield from tendering a report that he's been ordered to do by the GCOM chair, Justice Retired Claude Singh. Uh, however, um, uh, the, the former Attorney General and candidate for the opposition's People's Progressive Party, uh, which has been handed the lead uh, in this elections and has taken the presidency according to the recount, and in Anlal, he has said that uh, no injunction has been granted. It's just an application that's before the court, and therefore, uh, GCOM could uh, yeah, go right, right in. Ahead. So, Yog, I, I want to invite you right in so we can update the people what is happening. Today is a very critical day. Today is a day when it is widely expected that a declaration is going to be made, and we could see a swearing-in of a new president as early as today, Yog. So, with regards, let's jump right into the election, uh, to the injunction that was reportedly uh, uh, granted, we hear that it's not granted. What has what, what what really transpired here? Well, a couple of things. One is that uh, a motion would have been filed, um, and we have gotten the details of what they're requesting. I must say that uh, a little while back, Guy hmm, the Guyana rag, uh, <laughs> Everybody knows that I call the Guyana Chronicle the Guyana Rag. The Guyana Rag was on air um, saying that an injunction has been filed. We have that clip. I just sent it over there, um, Leonard. So that clip is there, and the Guyana Chronicle would have said that an injunction has been filed. Um, what we have is that uh, what we have is a copy of the motion, um, as uh, viewers and listeners would know. Um, what happens usually is that uh, the arguments or the motion to, to ask the court to grant, um, you know, has to be prepared first. And this, uh, this motion to let everybody know, uh, just when you think things are going to come to an end, uh, the motion seeks to, basically seeks to restrain uh, Pete Lowenfield from complying with the directions of his boss. It, it seeks to restrain Keith Lowenfield from complying with the directions of the chairman and to restrain him from submitting his report to GCOM. So more shenanigans, more, more uh, wickedness, um, you know, more things at play as we see one attempt or another being made to delay these elections. Leonard, I am sorry. I will have to call it exactly the way I see it. And, uh, you know, it is, it, is just, um, it is just something that we have to be careful of. We have, you have, you have said, right, that uh, Anil Nandalal would have come out immediately after the Guyana Chronicles um, uh, uh, release mm -hmm. that, that the injunction was served because the words that the Guyana Chronicle would have used was that the injunction was served. Um, however, Nandalal has said um, that that is not so. I'm aware that Mr. Sanjeev Datadin would have also reiterated the position that no injunction was granted to stop GCOM from doing its job. According to Sanjeev Datadin, and I'm reading from his uh, message here, an application for interpretation of the Constitution was filed. Only an interpretation of the Constitution is permitted in the article uh, against which it is filed. So there's no injunction stay or, or any other order that is even possible under that article. So according to Sanjeev, it is not even possible. Excuse me, but we are seeing the attempts. We are seeing the attempts. And Leonard, I must say this. Uh, two days ago, you and I, we agonized. Why did the chairman do this and give another two days? Why not just 24 hours or eight hours or whatever? But now we are seeing that, that the time is being used to do this. Well, absolutely, but it seems as if you, uh, as if there's no uh, big worry by the um, uh, the opposition at this point in time. Uh, the the officials like Anand Lal as well as Sanjeev Datarin has come out and they seem to have just uh, brushed it aside. Uh, based on their words, they said no big deal. It's just an application that has been filed. 
that the JICA meeting must go on. Do we have an idea right now, Yo, whether that meeting has started at GCOM? It, or I think it's well, 2 o'clock, right? It's 2 o'clock, they said. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the CEO has up to one today. So as of this moment, the CEO was supposed to have already delivered his report um, to GCOM, and there is nothing else that should stop that. So there is no... Um, uh, there is no stay, there is no injunction according to the most uh, recently, like a minute ago, the most recent information we have gotten is that no stay or injunction would have been served. Um, but Leonard, the truth is that now it is approximately 25 minutes after one. And if uh, Lowenfield has to go with what he's been instructed to do, then that time has passed. He has been instructed to submit his report by 1 p.m. today, by 13 hours, which is 25 minutes ago. So uh, no, no injunctions could, could now stop that. That is supposed to have been done. And if he hasn't done it, then he's in breach of, of, of following the instructions of the, the commission. Well, that, that is a, a developing story. You, uh, if it is that he's been instructed that there's no injunction, nothing stopping him, and he's been ordered by the commission uh, to do so, to submit that report by 1 o'clock, and he has no injunction stopping him, uh, therefore he is in breach, um, I think uh, that is something that we have to ask. Did he breach that order, that uh, instructions that he was given by his employers, uh, the Guyana Elections Commission? Uh, led by the chairperson, Justice Retired Claude Singh. Did he do that? Uh, we don't know at this point in time whether he has complied. I can tell you a few minutes before 1 o'clock, um, I would have uh, spoken to uh, an official in the commission, and that official says as far as they are aware, um, they have not received anything as yet. Uh, so that was minutes to 1. And with this thing here that's coming out uh, at around 1 o'clock, about some injunction that's been granted, which seems to be uh, a damn squid uh, now, um, the, as far as news is concerned, uh, then but, he would have to come under a lot of um, questions there. Correct. Correct, Leonard. Well, you know, the truth is that uh, um, at about, uh, about 10 minutes before 1, about 10 minutes before 1, um, we heard that there was this um, uh, last-minute... Uh, uh, it, hustle to get an injunction, injunction served. Um, so we all, you and I, I mean, and your team there, we have all been finding out as to whether it's, it's, it's served or not. We, what we got was a copy of the, the motion seeking an injunction. The motion, as we know, is just a motion. But um, what we also were stunned by is the Guyana Chronicles um, release that said that... Um, that the injunction was was served um so so that i think was was a bit of a stunner but uh anil nandlal and uh, sanjeev that did and says gunraj too says gunraj has posted on his own facebook page that uh, there is no injunction that has been served and that, that was posted 21 minutes ago which would have been minutes after one which means that at one the ceo report ought to have been submitted leonard well, and it all comes back to the respect and the rule of the law uh, when you have something. And if you have nothing stopping you from doing your job, it is no, um, uh, no order or nothing from the court. And so that's what I come back and say that if he's breached that, then the commission should be hauling him before them at the moment to ask him why did you do that. But in any case, uh, as far as the opposition is concerned, and this is based on what Ananda is saying, um, is that uh, this is just a minor distraction, that uh, no injunction has been served, an application has been made before the courts. And so uh, we are waiting uh, there uh, for that meeting. It's, it's not 2 o'clock yet. We have another uh, 35 minutes or so thereabouts. 
for that meeting to convene at two o'clock. I think uh, they, they, they are lawyers, um, uh, there is a lawyer, and there's a former judge that is sitting at the Ghan Elections Commission, so they will determine whether um, there was an injunction served and whether they could go ahead. So that would have to be one of the first order of business to determine whether anything has been served and whether they could go ahead with that uh, report that they're supposed to have in their hands. If it's not there, then that would become an it item on the agenda to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed, and, and Leonard, um, just to clarify, somebody have, uh, has asked, um, so if the report is not submitted, what will happen next? Um, there is no, there is no, uh, there is no opportunity for a report to not be submitted. However, um, we cannot forget, and we must not forget that the, that the commission, on its own, has the ability um, to to uh, to to basically do what it requests the CEO to do. In other words, if the CEO uh, starts to be even more um, acting against the, the, the commission and acting against uh, the will of, of, of the, the electorate and acting against the, the laws, then GCOM has its own power and can ex exercise its own power to, to proceed in her. Yes, so I want to bring you back. And, and, and you, yeah. this is something that has been coming up and up. We've been asking. Of course, it is acknowledged right across the board, I think, based on what I, I, I heard. Um, is that uh, we would, let's assume that no report is standard as, as of one o'clock, where do we, uh, uh, where, where, where would that leave the Ghan Elections Commission and by extension this entire process of elections 2020, bringing a closure to it. And there seemed, uh, a lot of people seem to be a little uncertain, but I agree with you, I think there could be no contemplation that he does not deliver a report. If he, if he does not deliver a report and there's no order stopping him, I think that would not only be uh, a gross uh, dereliction of duty. I'm, 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 I think that would be one side of it. The other thing is you refuse a clear instructions from your employer to uh, do something that's mandatory. This thing is really getting out of hand at the moment. Um, the, uh, whether we like it or not, um, while they, they're is access to the courts and while everybody has access to the courts to do that when i think it was uh, the courts our local courts have ruled there should not clearly be an abuse of the process um and i think it, it was it the chief justice that made that ruling i think it was that they should at uh, no point in time be uh, uh, an abuse of the process coming and and and, and filing frivolous uh, kind of arguments and other vexatious kind of um, filings before the courts. So this is something that uh, they would have to be looking into. But if you're joining us on election, this is a special edition, a snap uh, elections watch edition. And we're joining you to tell you that uh, there was an attempt or there was a reported uh, filing in the court. Uh, however, the opposition is saying that there's no uh, injunction granted and therefore a uh, meeting of the elections Commission should go ahead at 2, 2 p.m. It has been uh, set for 2 p.m. Uh, we have not reached 2 p.m. at the moment, and so there's none stopping the Ghana Elections Commission to go ahead and uh, look at the report of Keith Lowenfield. The problem is that uh, there's no, uh, we don't know if a report has been tendered. We have not received such confirmation. And so, Jog, it's a uh, whole, we, we are in a waiting uh, uh, mode right now, the entire Guyana. It seems as if when we uh, see the threats, the home threats in front of us, uh, there's a, a, some hurdles on the road, maybe a barrier that we have to jump through, maybe a hope that we have to jump through in order to uh, go to that uh, final home threat. The home threat seems to be eluding us. It seems to be drifting far, farther and farther away from us. However, uh, the opposition seems very confident at the moment. Thank you. And Leonard, there are a couple of things I want to clear up. One is as of yesterday afternoon. Well, well, we have all seen it before, but it became more pronounced. A number of the operatives of APNU AFC has started to post, um, I would say, very racist videos and, 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 and remarks on social media. Because it seems like some of the people in APNU AFC are hell-bent on saying that if APNU AFC is not in government, then, they, then it means in their mind some, some warped conclusion that a section of the population will not be looked after. And, and my, 
it defeats logic because are they saying then Apno AFC is only of one race? Are they saying that Apno AFC will only look after the other side and, and without Apno AFC nobody else will be nobody will be looked after in this country? It boggles the mind and it, it makes us it makes us wonder as to the intelligence or lack of intelligence of some of these so-called uh, um, operatives. So the other thing I want to quickly point out, it is important that we understand what Lowenfield has to do today or what is his report that he has to present. Remember the letter as of yesterday, re, uh, the letter of two days ago demanded or instructed uh, Lowenfield to prepare his report in accordance with Section 177, Article 177 and Section 96 of, of the uh, Representation of the People Act. That's correct. No. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what does 177 say? We went through 177 many, many times. And it basically says that he has to, um, the, this, uh, sorry, GCOM's chairman, GCOM will have to declare based on advice from from Low and Field, from the CEO, sorry. Let me stop using Low and Field's name because if some, let me make this clear. Low and Field is an employee of the commission. Mm -hmm. The CEO's position remains there whether Low and Field is there or not. Whether Low and Field decide he want to be sick, whether Low and Field decide he does, he, he wants, uh, you know, to, to, to be in further direction of his duty or not, the CEO position can be but can be vacated and filled at the snap of a finger by GCOM, by the commission, right? So that's one. Two, uh, so what Law and Field is supposed to do today, Law and Field is supposed to basically, um, uh, Section 96 says, he shall, after calculating the total number of valid votes, um, uh, as, ascertain the result of the elections in according with 96 and 97. Was 96? Uh, was 97, sorry? 97 says you got to divide by 53 and uh, and and then you you uh, basically the seats in parliament the allocation don't forget that this is just the 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 uh what you call it list you got to still bring on the electoral list that's why you, that's how you get to the six the geographical list sorry that's how you get to the 65 yeah. and 98 and so so this thing what he has to do leonard is basically take and present to the to, to the commission what he presented before that is a summary of the numbers that summary of the numbers which says conrad shared with us last night in room 592 and a summary of the numbers is a summary of the recount the total of valid votes cast and certified at the recount not some hair-brained uh extrapolation of the real verified votes i want to remind everyone Afno AFC has been playing a dangerous game. They're saying that somehow or the other, the allegations of, of uh, irregularity yes. is, is proof. In their mind, they're speaking absolute truth, and we know they're speaking absolute lies and trash. So the truth is that the, the votes certified in the certificate of tabulation certificate of recount sorry and the certificate of tabulation is what matters now nothing else matters now they could do whatever they want in terms of translating valid because like they want a definition of valid to be what up no fc wants leonard the truth is unless you're willing to say up no fc wins you you're not allowed to say anything else in this country that's the state of this country presently uh, what is bothering me, Yog, and I think I think this is I think this should be is something that should bother all right thinking guys. What uh, what would what would be the cause that would uh, that would allow you to think that is okay for you to hold this entire country at bay? Um, to stop the progress in this country, to to defy what is happening, uh, what the entire country is known, to defy what the entire world is telling you. And let me let me just remind you, if you're now joining us, we would have had not only CARICOM telling us, we would have had the ABC, and that's America, uh, uh, the United States, that is Britain, that is Canada, we had had the uh, European Union, we would have had Commonwealth, we would have had uh, the Organization of American States, we would have had our local people here, all of them 
has been observed in the elections and all of them have said that it will count as a bulk vote. Why would one man, and you got to understand, Yog, from uh, March the 2nd onwards, the tale has been twisting from uh, not only Claudette uh, Singh as the chairperson, but to Claremont Mingo, and now you have Keith Lowenfield, then it went to the president. Um, it is the, the, the narrative has been changing, the people, uh, it is really, really frustrating. I'm looking at some of the comments that is coming out here today, and there's a lot of frustration by the people, because what should have been a very, very simple thing, I've ordered you, Yog Mahadio, as the chief elections officer, as an employee of the Ghana Elections Commission, to please do this. What is so hard about that? Why do well, we have is... to wait? Why do we have to wait anymore? It's one o'clock. Correct. Have you done that? Exactly. And, and what is so hard about it, I'll tell you, is, is a handful of people refuse to give up power. Leonard, you and I know. And I just want to praise the, a, a hand, a, another handful of APNO AFC persons. You and I know there are certain ministers in this country of the last government, this is the APNU AFC government, because they're, they're lost, they're out of government. They're just squatting now in office. You and I know there are a couple of ministers that have already packed up, and they're already out of there. Their, their fear of recriminations make them not want to say anything publicly. We know this. We know who they are. Yet the rest of them are holding on. Holding on for what? Look, they said... And they know what they have said. They said that sanctions is going to affect everybody. So what they're hoping is when sanctions come, the rest of the people will punish. Because half of them are dual citizens, Leonard. They don't even, look, all the people that are creating problems on social media don't even live in this country. It's who live here, we're feeling the squeeze. We are the ones that have to face the world, that we are Guyanese and we are living here. We are not living under somebody else's umbrella. And this, this is embarrassing, man. Look, no one feel has to realize that at the end of the day, and I wish to make a public call. I wish to make a public call to the Canadian embassy and to the U.S. embassy and to all the embassies. Take away their visas. Um, Take away uh, Lowenfield's visa right now if he only delays this election any further. This is not mischief anymore. This is rank wickedness well let's see what happens but you this afternoon i think uh, we're gonna head straight to the phone lines now you know why because the people i think we should uh, we should stop talking and let the people have their say with regards to elections 2020 i think there's going to be a lot of anger today while we would want to say look you keep your cool and so on and that is something that uh, we what we will be encouraging in fact stay at home allow the process to work allow the media to do the work allow the authorities gcom has three commissioners on one side three on the other side and there's a chairperson and the entire opposition as well as for the other side the coalition side everybody is watching on so allow that so keep it calm there is a crowd gathered uh, i think of a uh, just a few supporters of the coalition that is in front of the GCOM headquarters. Um, the reporters has been shifted to the back, uh, to the west of uh, where the GCOM headquarters is, uh, to probably protect them. And uh, because the commissioners and others have been using the back entrance, and I presume this is a safety precaution. But uh, our reporters have been telling us that they are at the back of that place there now. And they've been talking to reporters from the back of the building, not the high street area, but from the other area. I think near to near near to the water street area. Um, so that's what we 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 take in. So as of now, yo, it's two two six seven four five three. We're gonna head to the lines. Uh, we want to hear from the people of Guyana. Uh, Yog Mahadi and myself uh, 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 would uh, want to talk less today. We want to hear from you. What is it uh, that you're thinking uh, about this latest development? Um, and if you've now joined us on this SNAP elections uh, COVID-19 watch, uh, we could tell you that there was reportedly an attempt to file, uh, or there was reports that an injunction was filed. The opposition said no injunction was filed. Uh, there's an application 
decision, however, that is before the courts, and, and therefore, GCOM could go ahead and meet to consider a report by Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield. However, we don't know if that report has been uh, filed as, or uh, tendered as yet, handed over as yet, uh, by Law and Field to the Commission proper. Uh, so we wait in the confirmation on that. As soon as we get it, uh, we're going to be telling you. But uh, as of now, 2267453, and you, of course, uh, you could send your text to 6222, and uh, we're going to read them on air. Keep your call short sweet and uh, we want to hear from you uh, let us keep it civil well, let us keep our comments civil as well uh, let us don't descend into something that would have us branded as a people uh, who are not of the again again is a good country let us be uh, such people and so yoga i think we're going to head to the phone lines uh, good afternoon caller yeah. you here yes good afternoon caller you here yes good afternoon good afternoon yeah. Good afternoon. Sir, well with you. Thank you. I am getting sick and tired of Kiklo and Fimo. I am getting sick and tired of David Granger and Harmon and these guys. Why these guys feel Guyana belongs to them and they're holding this country at ransom? My God, you are working for the people of this country and you get an order from your boss to submit a document. I am looking at the newsroom up to now. Nobody know Kiklo and Fields were about. What nonsense is going on in this country and this, that the president of this country call himself a man of integrity and he is sitting there and doing nothing about it? Thank you very much. Any what other comments, Carla? What, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't understand. People, 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 bank books are running down. The bank is on people's back. The, 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 the people who want the money, you got to pay your rent, you got to pay your bills. And these people just holding everything up because of their selfish and greediness. They don't have to worry about nothing. Their bread are well buttered. Their bread are well buttered. They care nothing about people in this country. Mm -hmm. It's enough, it's enough, man. And then they have a set of people on Facebook calling for, for people to do this. Go on the street. Disregard do them. Do not share it. Do not. Do not. Uh, no, do not I, let I us. Not into that. Yes. I'm not into that. I am not into that. But my God, man, Guyanese, come on, come on. Let's forget PPP and forget PNC and forget these things. Let's put Guyana first. Let's put Guyana first. Guyana has come a far way. We cannot go back to those days. The people win the election. Everything is showing that they win the election. Allow them to go into office. We as a people need to hold them accountable each and every single day for the next five years they're going to be in office. If they're doing things we don't, we doesn't like, there they, they, they are news that we can take. We can go places. We can go protest against it. But let's allow peace and let's allow a transformation of government in this country let the opposition will have an opportunity in the next five years. They're going to sit in parliament to represent their constituency. Come on, people. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you very much, Zay. Caller, any other point that you want to raise now? I, and another thing I want, to, I, um, I want to find out, some, I need to get some clarity on. If it's it that by the end of the day, Kiko and Field for some reason does not appear, our reports have not submitted. The time has already expired based on the order. What would happen now? What, is, what would be the next move? If you can, if you can shine some light on that for me, I'll appreciate it. Thank you very much, dear caller. Um, Yoga, I want, uh, before I hand you over to Yoga, because there's a question uh, that we've been asking, and that is something we don't even want to contemplate. We can't contemplate an employee refusing an order from an em employer, especially such a lawful order that has come down straight from the chair um, in a letter that the language is unambiguous. Uh, but I want to say to you, uh, do not share anything, anything racial. Do not do anything that is going to um, uh, hype 
the sensitive minds of our people at this point in time. Uh, our people, they hearten. It has been a really top more than 100 days. Um, but not only that, we can look at the past year before that. 2019 was one that, that has been characterized by ups and downs, turns and twists, and by, by an entire year which we wasted. Uh, in our oil oil and gas development so do not do anything at this point in time that is going to um people are smart you but i want to hand you over uh, to uh, to probably uh, see whether you could come up with some comments on what the caller would have raised uh, what next uh, if uh, such scenario arises well look if uh, if if Lowenfield decides that he is walking off the job if he's not going to turn up to work if he's not going to obey the instructions of the the commission then the commission has to immediately replace him no don't waste any more time uh, madam justice retired uh, claudette saying this nation has been waiting 107 days now 108 days now no more wasting of the time if Lowenfield doesn't want to do his job look <laughs> Sad but true. If it's not low in field, then it's who? It's Roxanne Myers. If it's not Roxanne Myers, then it's who? You go, you go on. But this thing needs to be dealt with and dealt with immediately. So low in field is not the be all and end all of it, Leonard. Let's make that clear. The CEO is the be all and end all. Low in field is, has been employed as the CEO, but the CEO is a, is an office. It's not a person. And the person can be easily gotten rid of, fired, fired if he's not doing his job. We have waited too long. Look, billions of dollars have been spent. And this man, given an instruction two days ago, decided he is going to wait another couple hours until he receives an injunction. And then he wants to say, well, I can't act because I've received an injunction. You know, this is getting beyond criminal. This is treasonous. And I think the Guyanese people must, re must, must remember this for a long time. Leonard, I want to say this too. Um, you know, it seems like Apno is also saying, based on if you listen to, to Joe Harmon's most recent uh, uh, public, uh, I hate to use the words I want to use, but, but he has been making, he's been placing his, his miasmic mind in public place. And... Of that, really what they are saying, Leonard, that if there is no up, no AFC government, there must be no other government. It's either us or no Guyana, nothing at all. And that is unacceptable. This country has people, men and women and children, who want their lives to go on regardless of their politics, who want to live and provide a future for their children. And the final thing I'll say, Leonard, is, is to call, uh, look, I'll say it how I feel, man. I, I, you know, Mr. Granger, sir, this is now embarrassing on you. You know the results since March 2nd. You yourself was fed with a spreadsheet. You said so publicly. Oh, man, pick up your SOPs. You have eyes. Those who have eyes should see. You have a heart. Listen, look. Because, you know, Leonard, Granger could have gone out in glory. He could have ridden, ridden into the sunset, shining in glory. But now he's leaving in shame and disrepute. All his life, he has been an army person. He has been a, a well, I, I don't know if he's a, his, he can't be a historian anymore because he's trying to rewrite history. But the man is going out in, in a blaze of shame rather than a blaze of glory. And, and that's, that's, the, that's, that's what he needs to realize. Well, you look at you look uh, at his face. Right. You look at his face. What do you see anymore? What 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 what, what um, not handing over the report? Could we view that as you walking off the job? Yes, yes. If you are not complying with an instruction to hand in your report at one o'clock, and if you are not even showing up, then it means you have walked off the job. Now, this is not the first time he has done it, Leonard. You remember during those days and nights at, at, um, at, at the GCOM Center when, when Mingo was doing his magic, 
You remember Lowenthi was nowhere to be found? You remember that we were waiting days and nights and nobody could find anybody from GCOM? Nobody knew and then the police were instructed to lock all the commissioners out? Well, this is exactly what he's doing again. It's a stalling game. It's a waiting game so that he could be served with an injunction. But I think Sanjeev has put it well. You cannot have an injunction or the court will not be able to, will not tolerate filing of a motion that is that is baseless. But not only that, it's one at this point in time. Yeah, GCOM already said it is not a court. The court cannot go force GCOM to become a court. The court cannot tell GCOM you are a court of law. I mean, the court itself is going to abdicate its duties. And this is Sanjeev Dattadin, if you've missed it, and I think this is what Yoga is referring to. Sanjeev Dattadin in his Facebook post. He's an attorney and a candidate for the uh, People's Progressive Party Civic. There's we seem to have a new new update, Leonard. Sorry to, to um, break into. We seem to have an update that the report has been officially handed over, the final report has been officially handed over. Both you and I, whilst we're on air, we're going to try to confirm this and share it with everyone. Very good. And so if that is indeed the case, um, that is a major development. Unconfirmed reports coming to, uh, to our studios here, uh, Dr. Mahadio uh, too, uh, would have indicated that the report by Keith Lowenfield has been handed over. We're trying to get confirmation as of that. So uh, within five minutes, uh, GCOM Commission is supposed to be meeting. Uh, to discuss that very key report if it has been tendered. If it was not, then it would have become a topic, uh, a, a top priority of GCOM to discuss whether Kate Lowenfield has breached um, uh, the order that he or the instructions that he was given by GCOM, by the commission itself, to deliver that report so they could go ahead and make a, a, a declarations and maybe even swear in of a president. And you, this, uh, um, as of today, I think uh, this is not going to go away very easily at the uh, the eleventh hour at maybe eleven thirty nine. Uh, that is what we will be looking at. Uh, there was even an attempt to stop a process which has been cleared all the way, um, and this is something that is going to have a very telling effect on the legacy or the lack of legacy for Keith Lewinfield for the claimant Mingo. Um, even for the GCOM chair too, who has um, who's been who has been lauded within the last couple of days, because this is something any incoming chairperson. I'm not sure how long Claudette Singh is going to be there, but any incoming chairman or a chairperson for the Ghana Elections Commission would have to take note. But, but I think the bigger picture here, though, Yog, is that our politicians going forward, uh, they would know uh, very well that uh, Guyana is not going to tolerate this. Nobody in the right mind uh, that we have so much going for us. We have so many things that we need to do. And we have such frivolous, uh, vexatious um, happenings that has halted our progress. And we're not paying attention to the thing that matters, which is our pocket, our wallets. And uh, we're not paying mm -hmm. attention to what GR is doing. We're not paying attention to what Nissel is doing. We're not paying attention to what Gayana Goldfields is doing. We're not paying attention to the biggest thing, the biggest money earner uh, potentially, which is oil and gas. We have one of the biggest oil deposits in this part of the hemisphere that has been discovered in the last five years. And we have been touted as one of the richest countries in this part of the hemisphere. Guess what? We can't realize that because one or two or three people has decided they're going to hold this country to ransom. You know, Gilary is going to come out and say these things. Um, uh, I was always very reserved and as my place as a, a, um, as a person, as the host of the show, I was not really supposed to have opinions. I could only lead to um, uh, Dr. Yog Mahadio. But there comes a time when, when we as Guyanese people, Yog, would have to stand up and say enough is enough, like that caller not too long ago. And we have to say that we're not going to tolerate it, and that the country needs to move forward. We need an opposition that is going to go in there and be as strong as they could ever be. Uh, even stronger than what the PPP would have done within the last uh, um, uh, last parliament. 
we need a coalition that is, a, 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 sorry, an opposition that's going to be looking at what they're doing with this oil deal and hold the feet to the fire. We need an opposition that's going to be looking at our spendings and make sure that there's no waste and that our contracts are being given out on the very, very clear guidelines in keeping with the law. There's a call on line. Let's go straight to the, to the lines. Good afternoon, calling your dear. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. First thing, during Jagio government, I don't know if you can remember the name, Yang Wegmon. Go ahead. You remember the name? The name sounds very familiar. Yo. Go ahead. I was, was Kaicho News Pressman. Yes. Five of cousin, them. He get killed during the crime wave. You feel I want another system like this for another cousin get killed for me? Hmm? And another thing. Well, that's... Sir, yes, sir, you cannot make such allegations. Um, the yes, court yes, has to deal with those yes, matters. You, yes, you, yes, look, uh, that's why you have an election. Because when the governments break the law, you replace them. And this government has broken the law like people right. did. Just listen to this say one minute. And in another, I'll say that g -Con got tremendous power to overturn any decision and do as they, whatever they want. g -Con got so much power. How come now g -Con not have power? to put the election on and avoid when both sides, both sides try to scam the election. Both sides, because it's me side for one side, me side and the other side, both sides try. You understand what I show you? The election well, is supposed I, to be non and I don't, I, I don't know, know that. I am looking at the CARICOM report, and the CARICOM observer report has said clearly who's trying to read these elections. If this for the one box that in the lower east coast in region four, Go, go we're going there again. Power, right? No, I can't go there, right? If this no, because I box, told you before, no, sir. Man, add all the 41 boxes to your account and tell right, me what you you're, get. You're not, you're not giving me a chance to finish the here why that, you know? You're making the same allegations. You, know, you got listen to what I'm saying. If this for one box was for Linden, right? And it's for the app, no. Would, would everybody accept it? And they had this for one box to come to victory? Will everybody accept it or they would have called for a fresh election? I just want to hear a comment when I put on about the I, I don't care. Thank if, you very much. If that had happened anywhere and the Akaricom Observer Mission would have made the report they did, Leonard and I have stood on that side all the time. We have called it exactly the way it is and that's how it has to be. You, sir, neither you nor I, can pronounce on the law, the courts have to pronounce, the courts has to do what they have to do. Now, the truth is, regardless of how you turn it twisted, let us go right down back to March 2nd and March 3rd and March 4th. None of you want this discussion. Everybody, as soon as we mention Mingo name, you have nightmares. This recount did not count anything else other than what was in the box on March 2nd. It's the same ballots that were counted. The same one that you were ready to declare with. Whether ballots, uh, whether the, the folio was present or the poll book was present or not, you were happy to be sworn in with that. But when it's missing for somebody else to be sworn in, you have a problem. It cannot be. What goes for one has to go for all. And the truth is, Leonard, let the courts decide. Why are we fighting over this? Let us file an elections petition and go to the court. That is clear. But you let us even go there. The GCOM, uh, we are at a different stage right now. That has been put beside us. There is a commission which is in charge of elections. The commission has ruled. A uh, decision has been taken by the GCOM chair. She says that the jurisdiction is not ours. It is the court to determine uh, uh, those observations and those complaints. If it is before that, it has to be dealt with. We are at the point in time of swearing in. Why are we going back there? You cannot uh, have it. The, the, the lady is already ruled. The GCOM, the GCOM, the commission is already ruled. That is not yeah, a contemplation at the moment. And the truth is, Leonard, yeah, you are right. The GCOM has already ruled. And, and, and here is what. This is where Mr. Granger and Mr. Kemra Dranzatan, the leaders of those two main parties in the coalition, they will have to bear the responsibility of everything that has happened here. I really expected Mr. Kemra Dranzatan would have by now stood, stand to his words. He said that if the, when the PPP win, he's gonna be the first to pick up the phone and concede. 
What has happened? Every additional day is a new excuse. Where is Mr. Granger? He waits and he allows his 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 uh his foot soldiers to go out there and mop up everybody and threaten everybody and say everything. What happened? This country does not have a voice. We can't say what we feel. We must shut up because because of what a great Mr. Joe Harmon says. I'm sorry, no, that is in the past. And as we keep saying every day. It's a new beginning, and it's a new beginning for Guyana, not the politicians. Why are we allowing the politicians to rule our lives and to determine what is right and wrong? We are people who can think, and we know what's right and wrong. Well, there's no contemplation at this moment uh, for what the gentleman there, Mr. Gill, has, has brought to the fore. Uh, GCOM has already ruled that that's behind us. Uh, there can be no, she doesn't have the authority to and all. We can only look at the results of the recount, and that is where it's at at the moment, according to uh, GCOM, and we can only go by that. I understand what Mr. Gill is saying. However, we've gone past that stage. That stage is for the High Court. There's a call on line. Good afternoon, calling on here. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Go ahead. Could you speak up a little, please? Okay. Um, what I would like to say is that the election is over. Yes. So we would just like uh, to go forward as a country because it's been quite some time, you know, we've been waiting. And I would like to also commend, you know, a few gentlemen that stood up for Guyana democracy. Mr. Yug Mahadio, thank you for highlighting or educating us on facts. Likewise yourself, Mr. Gidari, Mr. Jonas, Mr. Schumann. So I don't know why the Ghana is still in this division. But I do hope and pray that, you know, we work things out and we get things started out. But um, as far as the, the present government, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> um, the APNU AFC, I think that there should be, you know, some sort of understanding in terms of coming to grips that they lost on Ghana. The Ghanaian people have voted, and I just wish the supporters because, you know, they're feeding the supporters with a lot of lies and these sort of stuff. So I just hope that the supporters could be educated, get themselves educated on stuff. Because I know that lately they've been coming out and lashing out about PPP and PPP time. And well, what I would like to tell them is that we have given both parties an opportunity to serve us and both have failed us. And that's why... We ended up now back to PVP. Because honestly, I, I voted two times in my life, and both times I voted, I voted for the APNO AFC. This time I didn't vote because I thought that, you know, I've had enough of both parties. But my thing is, if you're right, I'm going to give you that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you where you deserve right. And we have seen APNO AFC and their supporters. Uh, being very, very childish with this movement trying to rig the election, which is absolutely wrong. Guyana is not only made up, made up of one set of people, and more so, we need democracy. So, this is the only thing. Thank you, gentlemen, for hearing this program. I'm Thank you. Tune. I, it's been quite some time I've been trying to. Thank you very much for letting young people, because I'm pretty young, and letting young people know what's up because there's a lot of young people is not educated enough to understand what's really going on. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear caller. Uh, uh, very um, encouraging words indeed. And it's yep. good to hear from our young people, um, Yoke. We had some young people in our program room 592 mm -hmm. last evening. And, and so, Yoke, maybe you want to jump in there. But before we go there, yes. uh, we seem to have a confirmation from our reporters down and seen. We're going to try to get uh, our reporters online in a very short while. Uh, but uh, no report has been tendered by uh, Keith Lowen. It is after 2 o'clock now, Yoke. So I would want to say that Keith Lowenfield has walked off the job. Would you say that? I would say that, and um, I must say that uh, initially the reports came out from no other than GCOM's PR officer mm -hmm. that a report was submitted, and she subsequently said she made a mistake, and it was not a report, 
Um, so we seem we seem to be uh, on a puppeteer's string. Uh, the country that is, we all seem to be on a puppeteer string, and the person who is the the master, the puppeteer, is is Keith Lowenfield at this stage. He has the entire country on the strings of his finger, and he's playing us and playing us and playing us, and this has to stop. You are right. If Lowenfield is not delivering his report, then the chairman has to make a decision and move on. There are other Lowenfield is not the be all and end all of it. It is the office of the CEO that has to make that report. And you know what, Leonard? The report that Lowenfield has to submit, other than the allocation of the seats based yeah, on the votes, the right. total votes were already with, with the commission. He already submitted that as part of his initial preliminary report. And that cannot change. He cannot change those numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's his difficulty. He cannot erase what he submitted as his first report. That is the numbers part. Says Gunrad, Commissioner says Gunrad, share that with us last night. The numbers are the numbers well, um, and uh, they can't change. Joe, I, I, I must interrupt here. I think we have our yes, reporter, sure. Shikimu Day. How are you doing, Shikima? Shikima is one of our reporters of Kaitra News down on the scene of the, the Gan Elections Commission headquarters there in Kingston, Secretariat. And Shikima, we were we want to have an uh, update as to what is happening there. We know that there's some crowd, a uh, few smattering of the persons uh, from the coalition that is gathered in front and the reporters are at the back on the western side of the Secretariat. Um, could you tell us with regards to the delivery of that report by Keith Lewis? been much anticipated, whether you're hearing anything has been delivered. Well, we heard that he delivered the report for us in Chief of PR, and Mr. Mandela, who are qualified that his report has not yet been handed in. So, myself and the rest of the media workers are outside of the GCM compound, awaiting a uh, definitive word whether the report has been submitted. So there, there, there are talks about whether an injunction has been served or not. Have you guys heard anything, any confirmation, any word from anybody as to the we case? We heard that an injunction was filed, but the injunction was not granted. So that injunction has no bearing on the meeting today. Right. The commission can still make their declaration and the CEO can still have any his report. But he has not as a two o'clock and the meeting was scheduled for two o'clock. We tell it's after two in the morning. For one o'clock? For one, yes, one. Okay. But there has been some delay. What is the mood out on the street there, Shikima? What, what are you seeing? Or what are you hearing? Well, we're not hearing anything right now because we are far from the VC vessels, but uh, from what I saw from the video, people that were out there that were out in the party colors, they were. So the usual tunes, uh, the mood is quite celebratory. But outside, you know, the reporters are standing. We are standing in the rain right now. Yes. I just want to show you how the rest of the nation is for the agency to make the declaration. Thank you very much, Jerry. You have any questions for Shikimo? No, keep keep going at it, and we look forward to your updates. And no thank problem. you very much, Shikima. You guys have been doing a tremendous job uh, since from March 2nd. You guys have been uh, working at it. And I want to say thank you very much dear, to you, Kimal King, and Mikhail Prince, and of course to our staff as well with Kaichur News there. Uh, everybody has been putting in the shoulders to the wheel by extension. Other media houses who have been day in, day out gathered in front of uh, not only the convention center there, but of course in front of the GCOM Secretary. So thank you very much there, uh, Shikima Day. No and problem. we will be checking in with you uh, as the story develops there from Kingston, uh, George Young. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. And so Yog, uh, Shikima would have made it very clear. False alarm. Uh, Kate Lowenfield has officially walked off the job because uh, he has not delivered. He has not received he has not received uh, any injunction and he has not delivered his report. So uh, that is uh, the conclusions uh, that are being made based on we've seen some text coming in. He has walked off the job because that's what it's um, tantamount to. Uh, so that's what we have so far. Um, in the meantime, I think Correct. we could... Yes, go ahead. Leonard, let me let me just quickly say this. So Dan Isaacs, one of our viewers, has said that one cannot force an employee to act against the Constitution if he believes that that is the case. And, and therein, I think, sir, I, I respect your opinion there. I beg to differ because your words belie the position itself. That is, if he believes that is the case. He had from, month, he had from the date of the letter to him, 
to up to yesterday afternoon, up to 12, up to 1 today to go tell his employer that I think we are mistaken or to represent himself. He cannot sit on his own and decide because that is his belief, that is his view. And I don't know that Mr. Lowenfield is a, is a lawyer. He needs to be legally advised. So, you know, at the same time, he cannot hold the entire nation at ransom because everybody else believes the opposite to what he believes. And he is a servant of the people. So, Leonard, everybody, we are all getting caught up with this way and that way in this thing. Uh, but it's good to see these opinions come out because, yes, the truth is there is no employer that should or could force an employee to break the law. You cannot break the law. And if your employer uh, in, uh, instructs you to do so, you have a right on the law to not follow it. But in this case, that's his belief. And if you have a right on the law to not follow it, you have to have a legal representation or you have to explain to your employer why this is so. He hasn't done so. I hope that you have a job for me because I'm going to try that on the, uh, Glenn. I'm going to, um, <laughs> you're probably going to have to give me an instruction and then I'm going to have to refuse and see, uh, how far I could push his buttons. But it is very, very clear here. Um, this thing is very, very simple. An instruction has been given to, uh, to Gildari by Yog Mahadio as the chief elections officer. And, uh, Gildari does decide I'm not going to do it because, um, I, uh, there's nothing stopping me. I don't have to listen to Yog Mahadio. He's my boss, but I don't have to listen to him. That is madness. Absolute madness. It's, it's unlawful. Um, I, I think it should be unlawful, right? There, right. It's in, I think, in direct contradiction to um, uh, his, maybe his contract that he would have had as a CEO. He would have sworn to uphold the law. He would have sworn, I mm -hmm. uh, think, maybe on a Bible. Uh, to basically carry out uh, without fear and favor uh, everything else that comes uh, uh, with that office there for you to not act yeah. for you not to carry out the instructions of the uh, of a judge that is sitting there with the chairperson and everything that has come down to this for you to do that then uh, you're saying to the rest of Guyana to hell with you. Uh, you're also saying to the people of Guyana that you have no respect for them and that you don't really care mm -hmm. about the law. That is what it comes down to, Yog. Correct. Correct. And Leonard, you know, one has to now wonder, having seen Mr. Lowenfield's behavior, having seen the employees at, G at GCOM, they all circle the wagon and they stand up for each other. They, they continue to employ Mingo, notwithstanding what he did. One wonders now, Leonard, what really transpired in the 2015 elections? What really transpired in the 2015 elections? If you cannot trust GCOM and its employees to do what is right, does it mean that the past was done properly? Uh, you know, it, it leads for all kinds of presumptions, all kinds of suppositions, and you cannot help but have this thought now. What are these people up to? Obviously, it is not for the law, because me and um, Lowenfield could have upon receiving that directive from the chairman, he could have gone to the court himself and say, I believe this directive is, is, is an injustice um, or an unjust directive, and I, I want protection from the courts to not, to not uh, adhere to it. So he could have done that. He is an army man. Yes. He knows what he ought to do. Yes, uh, so we head to the phone, phone lines. Yes, good afternoon, caller, you in the air. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. No. I know Madam Chief Justice had three days from the 13th to the 16th. I want to know, Mr. Yogmadio, why another three days after the 16th with a simple mathematical which a grade six student can, can, can tabulate? Receive it with the participation of the year. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a question before um, uh, you come in here. There's a question I ask myself and I think all guys are asking themselves too. So why? 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 Why, Yog? Could you answer that? Well, uh, look, it, it's obvious that everybody is trying to stretch the limit here. Leonard, the other question we have to ask that can lead to this, why? Is it that some people need a couple more days to, to tie up some loose ends in their offices? Because we have seen pictures circulated by the opposition on their, on their social media page. I don't know if the media has been able to verify this. Of, of truckloads of documents being sent from GRA to the dump site. 
um, you know, we have heard reports of things moving out. We have seen photos circulating of things. Being, is it that they need a couple of days more to clear their offices? Well, say so, no man, who, you know, just get your stuff out and move because you're holding up people and children and people are starving in this country whilst games are being played by the politicians. And this is unacceptable. But to answer the question directly, sir, the three days, uh, so, so when Lowenfield hands in, his final report to the commission, uh, Leonard, whether we like to hear this or not, that's when theoretically the three days starts, you know. That's, that's when it starts. So the three days has not even started as yet. If one were to go back to the order, I think Mr. Chris Ram had spoken about it briefly when we had him last week in room 592. So the three days theoretically only starts upon his, uh, his tendering of the final report. So there might be more delays as yet, but, you know, we are hoping that the chairman would act with the alacrity that we know that she killed someone. Hey, partner, there's an, another twist to the story. <laughs> I don't know, you're giving me a headache, and you're giving more guy needs more headache. There's another caller in line. Caller, good afternoon, you're near. Yes, caller, good afternoon, you're near. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, go ahead. Um, you know, I, I don't know when it's going to over. But I think it's time for us to start getting to the conclusion that GCOM and its employ and the people that work there are outlaws. Now, I don't know if you could recall a Cashman building the day when Mingo did all his magic. Mr. Lewis, he already had documents to swear in the president. And why is it now that the recount done when? The 13th or something like that. Today is what, the 17th, the 18th, and we ain't get nothing. Why is all of these documents and documents and documents, when is that done? And, and if Mr. Lewis he refuses what he's by law required to do, what does that mean? Can, don't they have a deputy chief election officer? Because you have a, you have a deputy returning officer. You should have a deputy chief um, election officer. Looking forward for your answer off here, Gilari. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. I can hand that over to you. But before I do that, there is a text uh, that came in last night, and then somebody is sending another one here. You, uh, the person is saying uh, the uh, the the authorities should go ahead after the elections, after the swearing in, to put uh, sanctions, immediate sanctions. Uh, temporary sanctions on officials like uh, Clement Mingo, um, uh, Kate Lowenfield, and others pending an investigation, and they want to see revocation of visas um, uh, that you're not allowed to travel based on those investigations that is ongoing. Not sure how to respond to that, but I would like to put it to you. The issue was raised last night in another text, and here, here you have it again come up because you don't want these people to escape. Um, uh, uh, based on uh, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. However, the people need answers. So I want to put those two things to you, Yoga. I would love to hear your answer on that. Uh, well, uh, sorry, sorry, Leonard. I got a little distracted because now we are hearing that. Um, oh boy. Uh, uh, so there's no injunction. That that is that is so. Uh, but we are hearing that low and field. Um, has decided that because he has received a notice uh, of a writ, a notice of a motion, that he feels that he cannot proceed. We are still awaiting confirmation for that. That, Leonard, this, this thing is becoming... What, what other adjective can be used? This is criminal. This is, this is, this is an intentional, uh, you know, subversion of, of not just instruction but but of justice natural justice itself lowenfield is not an authority he is an employee he's a creature of the commission and you know it boggles the mind to see these things coming out um and, and i don't know i mean how else can we discuss anything lowenfield has in my view lowenfield has his last dance and he want to make sure this dance goes on forever you know this is beyond criminal now Leonard. i would wish i would want the combined uh, stakeholders in the process josh kanhai and ronda and and Irf, um, anin and lal i think if you guys are hearing this 
you probably need to go get a court motion to instruct him to follow the instructions. Because he cannot, he cannot act on a notice of an intent. There was nothing, nothing legally, Yog. He has nothing in his hands which has stopped him from carrying out his duty. He's been instructed. He cannot be instructed by anybody except by the courts, and the courts has not delivered that to him. It is it's a full stop as that. He is acting on the instructions from Harman and Granger. That, that, that's as clear as day now. He is acting on instructions, and, and this, it's political instructions. And I thought, you know, well, well it's a waste time to think and, and analyze what Granger says anymore, because Granger has been probably lying in public. Granger said he will accept whatever GCOM does. Granger said he does not interfere with GCOM. Granger said he's going to adhere to the CARICOM report. They're the only legitimate interlocutor. Yet now, Granger has gone absolutely silent. And they're silent and, and maybe making their phone calls now to instruct this man what to do. This is ridiculous. Yes, thank you. I think that there's somebody who is Texas here. Um, with due respect to you and Mr. Mahadio, the CEO did not walk off the job. He is in dereliction of the duty. He should be dismissed. And a new CEO uh, appointed. Uh, thank you. Uh, what we're saying is not that he's walked off the job, as in real, really walked off the job. By not carrying out uh, uh, his duty, uh, he's basically saying he's no longer uh, the, on, in, under the employ uh, of, of GCOM. And that uh, you could conclude that from the fact that there's nothing, no impediment, no hurdles, no legal, any kind of document in his hands. And so uh, we, could, we could say that he's walked off his job, or at least uh, you could take it like that. If you are, uh, I, as Gildari, uh, is on the employ of Yog, and, and he is instructing me to sweep the floor, and that's my job, and I don't do it. Um, I, I am not no longer the, on the his employ because it's my duty. That's part of my duty. Is, uh, so uh, you could say that I walked off the job. It's simple as that. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't want to do the walk. And, and Leonard, Leonard, what is the penalty for holding a country at ransom? Well, this is why I ask you, Yog, uh, whether uh, uh, the, that, uh, that person who would have been sending in that text, uh, the last couple of persons, whether they should go ahead and put a, a, a revoke the visa until such investigations are carried through. You don't want anybody fleeing the country for the nonsense that the people of Guyana has been subjected to. Um, uh, should we say the last couple of years? Should we say the last year and a half over the last 20 months? Uh, what should we say? Correct. Correct. Well, well yeah, indeed. And if, if you need more proof, look, look at the last two days. I, I agree with that, with that, um, the, the view of that person there. Indeed, the, the Canadian High Commission and the U.S. Uh, U.S. Ambassador and, and all of them should immediately impose personal sanctions upon Mr. Lowenfield and upon Mingo because you know what? When these elections are over, they will wiggle away. They are going to wiggle away. And let me tell you something. Here is something else. If Lowenfield is doing everything possible to ensure one set of person win and not, not what is the result of the elections be declared, he is really trying to cover himself because he has acted in detriment to this nation, but he wants to ensure the people who will pardon him remains in office. That's the only way he'll get off. What is the People's Progressive Party Civic? Uh, they have won the presidency according to the recount, uh, according to those figures. Have they been saying anything? Uh, do we know uh, uh, whether they have projected as to what they intend to do now? Because here you have one of the commissioners, say it's going to rise about an hour or so back, uh, saying on a, a Facebook uh, post, no injunction has been granted against the CEO chairman of GCOM. An application has been filed seeking several orders, uh, but no injunction has been granted. There is no impediment to moving this forward. Uh, that is what he's saying and has been shared, and that he is a commissioner of GCOM, um, uh, very, very clear. So um, he has not delivered. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a meeting going on with GCOM right now, whether um, the, the, the chairperson is deciding on the way forward. Uh, we don't know that, uh, you. Uh, so this is, um, uh, we were expecting that something would have been done. Uh, we were expecting that uh, Keith Lowenfield would have probably used the figures, his figures, and not put anything. Uh, what we're not expecting uh, was that he would totally outrightly um, just refuse to hand over the report which he's supposed to prepare 
and give to the chair uh, to the commission uh, so they could go ahead and have a meeting this afternoon. Uh, and that's supposed to be a mere formality. Well, the other side of it too, um, Leonard, is everybody's calling. I mean, a lot of viewers and listeners on online now are saying that, you know, people are saying that we need to, to, to petition the U.S. ambassador and the Canadian ambassador and so forth and say, you know, don't, don't allow these people to escape. You know, there is a reverse psychology there too, Leonard. They should probably give them a, a, a lifelong stay in their own country because we don't, we don't need such people here, man. This is, this is beyond. This is beyond acceptable. This is treasonous. This you you describe it. This is it. This is holding the entire nation at ran ransom. Children cannot get a meal to eat, and Mr. Lowenfield is sitting down there smirking with his report in his hand and not being ready to prepare to GCOM so this country could move forward. Mr. Lowenfield, if you want to go present to the chairman that PNC win. Get up and do it now, but do something. Don't keep this country at ransom and let the chairman then decide to throw that report back into your face. Don't be a coward. Get up and go prepare, present your report. An yes. army man is now a, the biggest coward in this country. Thank you very much, Zia. You have very strong words indeed, and there's a call online, and we're going to come back. Uh, call a good afternoon, you're here. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon, man. The police can arrest this man. <laughs> Good question. We're going to answer that. I, I don't think he has broken a criminal law. There should be an investigation. He's a criminal man. The police are supposed to look for him and arrest him right away. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Yogi, you may want to probably repeat what I just said here. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I everybody's frustrated, isn't it? We're all frustrated, maybe except a handful of persons. And, um, you know, like, like one of our callers, I'm sure he's at home sitting down and laughing at this and feeling good. Um, but we got to continue calling. Look, Leonard, I had really hoped, I had really hoped that this declaration would have been made that the new president would have been sworn in and that you and I could take some days off. Yeah, I, 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 need, I think I deserve uh, it. Need, you deserve it too. <laughs> I, need to, I need to have a couple nights of sleep. We have yeah. been doing this. We are up from daybreak. We are up from before daybreak. We are at it all day. All night we are at it. We are talking to people, helping people, dealing with stuff. And when we are off air, we are going out there sharing food stuff, sharing hampers, helping people. We need a break. This country needs a break. Every one of our views and listeners need a break from this, this negative nonsense. Absolutely. But it's, uh, yeah, they just want to prolong it. Uh, and the world is watching and the world knows what's, go what's going on. Are you going to fire me, you? I refuse to carry out your order. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, if I were, if I were in the position and hey, I did it once when people below me, if I'm the manager and people below me don't do what is necessary and what is within law, I will walk. I am not going to stay in an embarrassing, in an embarrassing or illegal position. I will chuck it in and walk. Absolutely. But somebody asked that, um, you know, there is another problem we have. Look, I wish to say it. I'm, I mean, look, I'm calling it exactly how I think and how I feel at this moment. If Lowenfield is fired, guess who gets the position? You don't want to know the answer, people. Rocks you don't want to know the answer. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, uh, so, uh, let me see here. Uh, we're going to go to the Ford lines when we come back. Uh, we're going to read some texts. Uh, we have some very, very upset people today. You're very, very upset. Uh, there's a call online. Good afternoon, caller. Yeah, good afternoon. How are you doing? Good afternoon, ma'am. You know, I'm very feeling very disgusting and fed up what Keith Lowenfield doing. $8 billion or $9 billion, $25 billion, what we have given to GCOM. This is what we pay low in fees for do. Stay home and refuse to give an important document for this country go forward. Eh? I'm going to so keep and so keep low in fee for my personal taxpayer money. What I pay him to do this nonsense what he are doing. And Mingo, as he's a pastor and he doing this kind of nonsense. He degraded all the parties them in Guyana and he need to put his act together because next when the government go in, in jail he the play with his you know. 
And I plead in to God, Claudia, sing, Miss Claudia, sing. Without Tick Lowy Field report, I plead in to she have the power to say that who is the winner and let Infant Ali swear in and let this country go on. Let she go on the road and Tick Lowy Field go on the road and see the punishment and the starvation of these people them on the road here, so. And I need something to done today. We are way too long. Too long, long, long. We waited since 2018. Until today, we waiting for the, for the right government to run this country here, sir. And we cannot get an answer. We cannot know who to write. We know who to write country and we cannot swear in yet. This is nonsense what's going on in this country. All we taxpayer money paying there for the nonsense and she come. Eh? Them never are all the, all the documents that they show from video. Eh? Show the media they show in. Eh? Them know the documents show there. And they, this is overbearing that need to stop today. Cause I plead in the car to say do what you have to do. Thank you very much, dear. Thank you very much, dear uh, ma'am. Uh, so if you're not joining us, uh, this is SNAP Elections COVID-19 Watch. Uh, we are bringing you updates with regards to uh, that very critical report that was supposed to be uh, tendered today by Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield. Keith Lowenfield did not turn up or he did not tender that report. Uh, that's because uh, there's a breaking news now and this is going to explain why he did what he did. GCOM CEO's uh, report stopped by notice of motion. The Chief Elections Officer of the Guyana Elections Commission, Kate Lowenfield, has yet to submit his report to the Commission after a notice of motion uh, was filed uh, to prevent him from doing so. Uh, GCOM's uh, Public Relations Officer, Yolanda Ward, has just informed the, uh, uh, that a notice of motion was filed in the Court of Appeal and served on the Chairperson and CEO. Notice was severed or severed on the C serve, sorry on the CEO before 1300 hours deadline for submission of report uh, in brackets here. The notice restrains uh, the CEO for complying with the direction of the CEO uh, of the chairperson and as a consequence of a report was not submitted. Uh, Lowenfield was expected to hand over his report to GCOM chair retired Justice Scott Singh at 1 p.m. today. However, this was not done. The commission will meet its plan and decisions on the outcome would be communicated immediately. So this is a report that's coming out of Kaitcher News. Uh, so we had to bring you up to speed with that. And you, uh, what you're saying there is that uh, you're right what you would have said there not too long ago. Kate Lowenfield, in essence, is acting on a notice of motion. There's nothing stopping, there's not an order stopping him or a temporary injunction or something like that. What he has is somebody serving a paper. Look, we file a court case um, and there's no order from the court, but he's used that as a basis to not do his work. What absolute nonsense. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, I want to, you know, the, the last caller has expressed a lot of emotions and, and uh, you know, to that last caller, I... I we all, I think all of Guyana, well, most of Guyana, 99% of Guyana, there's just 1% that now wants to hold us at ransom. We share your concern. But, Lana, I want to use this opportunity to appeal to everyone. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, this is why Leonard and I are here, because we, we know that we all need to ventilate. We know we all need to express our voices. We know we all need to talk about it. And we are here to talk it through. Please, however, let us stay calm yes. and let us be vigilant so that nobody, do not let any politician pull you out of your home. This COVID-19 is there. Uh, and also, please, do not let anyone convince you to go out in any protest and any march at this stage. Let us wait. It, we have waited 108 days. I know I'm asking the hardest thing possible here in our to wait more, to, to have a little bit more patience. But you know what, brothers and sisters? It's the patience that will see us through in the end. It's the patience because, it, you know, Leonard, 28 years, Burnham ruled. And, and, and you know, Guyanese were patient by and large. And eventually it came to an end. It might have come to the end with, a hand, with the hand of God. Right? Because Burnham died before he could have lost power. But it came to an end. And um, I, I want to just appeal to everyone. Let us please ventilate. Call us, text us, write us. 
take care of anger out by writing us or sending us a message. But please do not exhibit any anger or frustration, no racism, no reaction. Let us please be calm. And I echo that uh, fully, 100%, 1,000%, uh, Yoke. There's a call online. Call it good afternoon, you're in the air. Yeah, good day. Good day, sir. Uh, I can ask the question? Yes, absolutely. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, my question is, can, can uh, the chairperson, um, the chairperson of the GCOM, can she declare results without the, um, the, uh, the thing from, I forget what called. The, 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 the results of the declaration for the report. Yeah, can she declare result without a report from Keith Lowenfield? Is is there any possibility in the law that if Mr. the CEO of the election commission failed to do his job, that the chairperson can do his job for him? Or something to that effect? Yes. Uh, uh, could we answer you off here? Huh? Could Sorry? we answer you off here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Obviously. Thank you very much, Jay Caller, for coming through. Yoke. You want to attempt that one? Um, the, there is something called separation of duties. Eh? Um, and so there, this is why the, the, the duties of, of uh, law and field is separate from the duties of the chairman and the commission. Um, what the chairman and the commission will do is want to ensure that um, they will act upon the advice, the word, advice basically is what's in law of the ceo and so those two things are separate um and you know we gotta ensure that we can walk through it i think the caller has a point in terms of there will ultimately come a time if the ceo refused to do it and he if if you have a another ceo walks in and, and she refused because the deputy ceo is, is 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 myers and she refuses to do it then you ultimately gonna have a problem However, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to see what, what answers we can get to, to provide some solutions here because we, we need to give the people some answers. For example, in our, can, can, the, can the stakeholders in the process go to the court to ask the courts to, to tell law and field proceed with their duty? Or, or, you know, can the courts now act um, to say, hey, what's holding up this thing? We, we have received a notice and and it, it has any merit or it has no merit and, and just deal with it and let's move on. But obviously a lot of people and a lot of minds and heads got to come together now. Absolutely. Here's a text coming from New York. Uh, good afternoon. I'm watching from New York and so damn frustrating what these people are doing. Uh, the people that are holding this country ransom should see how COVID had snuffed uh, people's lives and tell themselves what is life, what are we really fighting for. One day we'll all have to leave and we leave. We should be leaving with dignity. Um, this is too much. I can imagine what my fellow brothers and sisters are going through in Guyana. Thank you for your good job. Keep it up. Thank you very much, dear, uh, from that person. Um, uh, uh, I believe this is another one. I believe that whether or not Lowenfield submits a final report as is instructed by, uh, at, by the instructed time 1 p.m. today, uh, Madam Chair has the authority to officially declare the credible, uh, the new credible president of the Republic of Guyana. Wherever that, whenever that is done, uh, then whatever legal action needs to be taken against Law and Field should be taken. She has the authority to get this thing over and done with, even though we know that she's keeping uh, with the formalities. Um, and that is something that we'll be trying to find out some details. Uh, Yog, um, uh, maybe you want to come in there before we go to the lines again? Yes, so we, 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 are, we are working on it. I'm working to see if we can get some more um, um, discussion Scenario, right. on, yeah, on the technical aspects of it. Absolutely. So we go to the lines again. Good afternoon, caller, you're in the air. Good afternoon, caller, you're in the air. I... Good afternoon, yes, sir. Harry. Good afternoon, you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, just a uh, couple of um, points I want to I wanna, um, raise. You know, we follow this whole saga from, from with, with various programs. And I keep hearing a term that is being used. And the term is based both from lo people locally and people in, and the international agencies, internationally diplomats. 
I have no dog in the race, or I have no arch in the race. And the first question, I'm going to get to half here, when I finish with the points. And one question I want to ask, especially to people like you, because I, I used to follow him on those span and this thing, and they keep saying this thing, I have no arch in the race. But if you have any partners or any um, the international agency or the diplomats, if they favor one party or the other, will they come out and say so? Will I say, if I'm a diplomat, I favor the, the APNO or I favor the PVP? I don't think they will say who they favor, if they favor party. So any person will always say, whether they favor us or not, they will always say, I have, I have no answer. This is, one, this is my first point. Mm -hmm. my, second, my second point is that when you have an um, election, the, the contents of the election, the, um, the, in the ballot box, that you can prepare for this election on polling day, they prepare it and they send it to the polling station. On completion of polling day activities, all the materials, every single material used or not used, or that was used, half used, whatever, goes right back into that box. Nobody move away with anything. It moves back into it move back, goes back into the box and seal out. So if it's a hundred pieces of paper that was sent there by this box, box slips, envelope, whatever it is, it goes right back in there. So if it goes back in there and seal out, and then sometime after I open that box and I see 99 pieces of paper, it tells me one thing, somebody trouble or tamper with the box. Somebody touched the box. Because these papers and these things cannot move by themselves. Mm -hmm. It cannot move by, them, it cannot move by themselves. So... For me, personally, for me as a guy, and for me as a person, I can never accept a situation where I'm opening materials. I mean, through this whole process, people have been blaming Mingo, Mingo, this whole process. But as I follow this whole recount, is that they was, they went to become start from day one, the, the RO from, the RO from region one, the, the poll was in Mabaruma when the poll, poll the box was in, was, was at the convention center. Do, so, and people are ignoring all these, all these things. That is, not, that, that is not so, sir, but we will answer you offline. That is not so. Anyway, what, what I'm saying, my point is this. If we use, and I'm, I'm blaming the, the coalition, the coalition <laughs> people, I will blame them. Because you know why I will blame them? Because if I am participating in a recount process, and I open a box, and there is things missing from that box, for me personally, I am, I am not counting that bus. That bus needs to be put separately in another car. Now. All the bus that have no problem, the bus that have no issues, no concern, everything is out of the bus. Yes, let me count this bus. When you open a bus and you find one, something missing, this, this, this thing about only the ballots, count one the bus, the bus, everything is good. I, 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 I can't, I cannot live with that because if you, people, people can put, people can do anything, they, People can do anything and put the once the bus is tampered with, it means anything to happen. But happen. sir, anything to happen. Sir, once the, the bus is tampered with. Yes, yeah. sir. Your presumption, or the base upon which you are making those statements, is not factual. It's not accurate. But so we will you, answer you. So we will you, answer you off. So you are telling me that you are telling me that not this message from the bus. Do you say sorry? You, I will. You I will deal. I will deal with it. I will deal with it as soon as you finish. Okay. All right, all, right, all right, thank you, thank you for your time and thank you for mm -hmm. listening. Thank you very much, uh, caller. Um, uh, uh, you've raised some points, and you uh, know that you're rearing. Uh, so let me let yes, me deal yes. with it quickly because you know we get other things we want to talk about. Let me deal with it quickly. Um, if the, the first point the caller made was to talk about the embassy saying they have no horse in the race, and how do you know that they have no horse in the race? Here is how I know. Here is how I know Kaichur News and Yog Mahade and the embassies and so forth have no horse in the race. Because in 2015, we were active, very, very outspoken as we are now. We didn't have this radio platform then because only a handful of people were given radio. We couldn't have spoken then, but we spoke with what we could have spoken. The embassies were very, very active. The U.S. government, the, the Canadian government was very active. In fact, they're the ones that, that, that were accused by the PPP for taking up new side then. So, so, uh, had they loved one side, they would have stuck with the one side that they, that, they, that they seemed to have backed in 2015. But they stood for the side of the will of the electorate. They stood for the side of the right. And, and consistently, that has remained and been proven to be true. To the second point, 
Sir, I just want to tell you this. There are two types of materials. Some of the, 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 the critical materials, they are to return into the box. They're the non-critical materials that go in what we call a pole bag. And those two things go back to GCOM. While you have been told that these things are missing, we have video evidence that all the pole bags were in GCOM. There is video evidence. Let me tell you what has been happening. You know why they don't want to file an election petition? Why they want to subvert justice and want to steal the, the government? And this is APNU AFC I'm talking about. Because they know that the moment they go to court with an election petition, all of these evidence, the evidence will come up to show that the poll books and everything was with the CEO. We have the... Everybody, we are not blind. We have seen the videos of them putting them in the bags and having them at GCOM. We have seen the evidence of the police escorting everybody out of GCOM. And those documents were left unprotected. We know they were with GCOM. So this, this nonsense about these documents now being missing, they are conveniently missing. And yes, we know who made them missing. We are not blind. We are not deaf. And we are not dumb. So, Leonard, the truth is, let us talk about the 41 boxes up on the East Coast now. The truth is, we also have evidence. We have seen it. Where it is Mingo and his deputy that ordered and instructed these persons to not place those things in the boxes, but to place them in the bag. All of those things are available. We are not blind. We are not deaf. We could see and hear. And that evidence is with public place. So we got to ensure that the narrative, the Kool-Aid that is being fed, please, please see where whose hand is coming from and be careful what you drink because you might be like the Pied Piper's uh, followers. Thank you very much. There's a text that is coming in here now from uh, Dr. Josh Kanai. And he is one of the candidates uh, for uh, the smaller parties. And then this is what he has to say. There's special power given to the commission to act if Keith Lowenfield or Roxanne Myers does not do their job. If Lowenfield walks up, then it's a deputy uh, chief elections officer's job to follow through with the chair's order. If they both reduce, uh, uh, then the commission will have the powers to deal with them. The commission governs governs the statutory uh, body being the secretariat, uh, the statutory body being the secretariat. So he's saying that the, it ultimately comes back to the commission, how to deal with them. Um, how do they deal with this? We don't know. Um, Yog, maybe you could probably want to answer uh, Josh Hanai there. Josh, uh, <laughs> Doc, uh, excellent point. Excellent point. At the end of the day, it comes back to, to GCOM, it comes back to the commission, it comes back to the chairman to, to take the bull by the horns and, and ensure that she gets things done. And the longer she delays, the longer she sits and waits for um, for uh, low infield to, to get up and get, um, the longer we're going to be stretched out. So, Doc, you're, you're very right. And um, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, Leonard, unfortunately, it is more pressures on Madame Claudette Singh, isn't it? You think it is pressure on her? She she has made it. She has gone under a lot of pressure by ruling uh, what she did. I think she's very, very clear in her head. Um, I, I, I think in the beginning, because this is something she hit the ground running last year when she uh, became the chair. Um, obviously, a lot of criticisms as to whether she should have taken charge of GCOM and uh, being on the floor, making statements, meeting with the press a little more. Uh, she has made some uh, uh, critical decisions, like the one early this week here. I'm telling you, uh, Yog Mahadi telling Gildari, please go uh, deliver to me those recon figures so I can make a declaration. I think she uh, uh, she's not going to be under a lot of pressure. What she's going to do is do what she would have done early this week, 
rule according to uh, what the regulations state in this particular case. Uh, Keith Lowenfield has not delivered his report. There's nothing stopping him legally uh, from not delivering that report. So the commission is faced with uh, one question uh, that the commission would have to meet now and decide what now. And uh, we could discuss those options that the commission has, which is some of the questions that are being raised by the people via the text like that call of the Josh Kanai. It comes back Back to the Commission has some sweeping powers. Mm -hmm. It has before it a report uh, from the Commission which has uh, the recount figures as well. How do you handle it? Uh, could you take over uh, what uh, the uh, Chief Elections Officer is supposed to be doing? Uh, I think um, um, could, could, the, could, the, uh, could the Commission do that, Yoke? Could the commission do that, take over the role of either, let's say Roxanne Myers and uh, Lowenfield uh, does not comply, does not submit those reports if it comes to that. What happens? Could the commission go ahead and make a declaration? Well, well the commission would have to, uh, the, the, the short answer might be no, um, because there is, as I said, a separation of, of roles. Um, but the commission, if there is one recalcitrant person, the commission can quickly take a decision to replace that person. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And, and so the ultimately, the, the, the long answer is yes, the commission has to do whatever is necessary to get to the point where these declarations are made. I mean, if, if uh, it's untenable to think that, okay, law and field is going to sit, um, uh, you know, sit comfortably for the next 10 days, and then they get rid of him, and then uh, Myers is going to sit comfortably for the next 20 days. That, it has to stop, and uh, I think, Madam Chairman, the Iron Lady is going to very soon realize his position and, and get on with it. Absolutely. The big question here, how is Gildari going to live with the rest of the country when this is all over and done with? Uh, how do they want to live? How do they want the people of Guyana to see them? I thought you would want to walk away from this uh, with, you know, you've held your head high. You've done what you're supposed to do, even though that maybe some decisions of yours would have come on the question, um, uh, your activism and your non-decisions also would be coming on the question. So, Yog, uh, 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 this is a text here. Good afternoon, Leonard and Yog. I've been following both your program every day, myself and other people, very frustrated, confused and emotional at this point in time. Um, uh, there's another one. The coalition won the indigenous vote so much that Ogley put me the fortune during the campaign season, knowing that I lost all the AFC votes as I woke up on March 3rd and learned that the PNC lost Region 9 and uh, Region 1 right away I knew that Granger was in danger. And this is coming from uh, all the way up in Region 9. I want to say hello to Region 9. They're suffering from some heavy floods there uh, along mm -hmm. the Latin Trade. Uh, so uh, that's something that we're not paying much attention to. I think the CDC is paying attention to it. So if you guys are hearing us uh, via the internet or, or whatever means, we want to say that you guys hold, hold stand strong, um, uh, that uh, we're going to get this over with and done. So, Joe, uh, we're going to head to the lines again. There's a caller on here. Well, Good afternoon, yeah. Quarter. Good afternoon, Quarter, you're here. Yeah, good afternoon. Are you still talking to? On air, uh, Dr. Yogmahadi and myself, Leonard Gilari, go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I just want you to tell me one thing. Is Mr. Fields, uh, Mr. Um, the, the CEO, is he still employed with GECOM? So, oh, well, <laughs> yes, yes we will answer you. We will answer you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. So, so, mm. so, um, uh, if he is still in the employee by not uh, delivering that order, this question whether he wants to be in the employee of GCOM because he has not uh, fulfilled that instructions. Uh, well, so, remember, Leonard, if if he uh, he he is in a very difficult spot at this moment. Because as one of my other colleagues, a, a very um, a good doctor friend of mine, uh, he has made a good point that if, if Lowenfield walks out of the job, if Lowenfield resigns, he suddenly opens himself up to prosecution because he's not under the protection of GCOM anymore. That's why Mengo could not have been let go because then you become open for prosecution from another perspective. Remember, so um, he is under the protection of his employee presently. Uh, employer, sorry, employer. Uh -huh. 
Um, uh, Dr. Yog, have you seen cow's behavior at the slaughterhouse? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking here. Um, uh, there's some other callers here. Uh, good, 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 good day, fellows. Any idea what happens to the border dispute if no government? Ah, this is a lovely question. Uh, any idea what happens to the border dispute if no government in place? That's the next big issue for Guyana. Well, this thing would have come up. I think the opposition uh, would have made it very clear. Um, everybody understand it is this very big case at the Hague, the International Court in the Hague. And uh, uh, all Guyana is back in that particular case, having a divided Guyana right now. That case comes up on June the 30th, and uh, they are arguing jurisdiction whether uh, the court, the International Court, which is an arm of the United Nations, has a jurisdiction to listen to this matter. So that's coming up on June the 13th. Uh, CARICOM has warned, and I think the, the rest of uh, the luminaries, uh, legal minds, and even Dr. Yog Mahadeo would have been on this, that if we present ourselves as a divided Guyana, it is not going to help our case by much. So we need to get this over with and done so we could not see another claim as has happened in the past by Venezuela to our oil fields, including the part that ExxonMobil is uh, drilling, uh, has drilled for oil and is now producing oil in Guyana's water. Uh, you will recall that Venezuela has made a claim, uh, doing a projection, uh, uh, created even a new map saying that it owns that area, it falls under their territory, uh, their, 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 their waters. Uh, so, Yog, it is a very good question. Um, um, we should present a, a, mm -hmm. a, a common face, one that shows togetherness. And I think we, you and I would have interviewed uh, former Army Chief Mark Phillips, who happens to be the prime ministerial candidate uh, for the, Kole, for the uh, opposition. And he is saying that uh, the border issue, this is not something that we're going to trifle with. Uh, we, have, we stand together and we are going to continue pushing it because we want to get this matter over with and done. Uh, so maybe a few comments before we go to the, the, the lines here again, Yoke. No, let's let's go to the lines as soon as possible. But uh, let me just say this: that um, fortunately, what would have happened is that uh, you know, uh, as a government, as a government, regardless of what government PPP is, I really don't care where the sovereignty is concerned of this nation. We would have already um, uh, secured uh, the services of whatever legal firms that we would have taken to get this done. But the call is right um, uh, because you can't look at the court case, Leonard. As just a case uh, in front of the, the, the mediators, uh, in front of the international court. You, you have to look at the, the positioning. What are we saying to Venezuela? Uh, what are we saying to the Venezuelan army? We are so divided. And, uh, you know, with what we are doing here, we don't know when we can be a one people again. Mm -hmm. Because this, this division is it, just going to drive desperation into this country. And it's going to send a signal to our our opponents so at the border cases. Don't forget we also have a border issue with Suriname. All of these things are there. Don't forget too, Exxon continues to flare gas. The, 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 the rape of this country continues. The $69 billion hole that APNU AFC has put us in continues to get deeper and deeper and deeper with each passing day. Mind you, while they in office continue to get a salary paid for by the, the public servants, you know, while all of us fighting here, a handful of persons are on the airwaves using state assets to drive an APNO AFC agenda. The Guyana rag that many people know as Chronicle continues to drive an APNO AFC agenda. The, the, the Mr. Granger and, and Harmon and all of them continue to be paid taxpayers' money while all of this is being drawn out. And, and, and you, there's a developing story uh, maybe on the sidelines here. You remember there's a lot of questions, the opposition especially has been raising questions about the uneven playing field when it comes to enforcing COVID-19 regulations. You know the regulation states very clearly, do not gather in crowds, do not, uh, you need permission before you could do any kind of um, uh, demonstration or, or any walks or anything. And uh, in fact, no uh, permission would be granted for that because 
uh, of the COVID-19. This morning, there were questions raised about people uh, gathering, uh, going up in team. And following that report, the police has put out a statement. And this is what it says that the crowd in front of GCOM has been dispersed. I'm, I'm going to quickly read this. Uh, this is coming from the police force. Uh, following the publication of the attached article early today, again, the uh, police force wishes to cathar uh, categorically state that uh, no permission was granted for anyone to follow the COVID-19 orders. This morning, a group of persons had gathered along Main Street, New Amsterdam, Barbies, in an attempt to conduct a protest march. The police quickly arrived at the location and dispersed the crowd, having been told by the deputy commander via loud hailer that they had no police permission to conduct such an activity. Four the police were able to identify a number of individuals in the gathering, and summons are being prepared for charges against them for breach of the national public orders restriction. So the police are going to charge those persons, even those along uh, uh, the uh, not only New Amsterdam but in the Kingston area who were gathered, and they are mostly uh, they are, have been identified here as APNU AFC. Uh, coalition supporters uh, who would have come out there maybe uh, directed there and they are not being allowed the police has dispersed them and so this is very good comment for the police force when we talk about enforcement yoke uh, we don't want people to endanger themselves do not gather in any crowds allow the system to work uh, we, 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 we understand the frustration on both sides of the table not only from the opposition side but from the coalition supporters also yoke this is a story that uh, I, I think people are not really saying it Many of them ha have been told that they have um, that they, the coalition has won uh, the elections, and therefore any other thing that's coming come out contrary to that, um, they should not accept, and they are upset. Uh, however, the results that is coming out from the coalition, from the recount rather, has all the disputed uh, uh, what uh, what has been that narrative that has been driven. What we do know is that uh, the recount figures has shown the People's Progressive Party has uh, a clear lead um, ahead of all the other parties, uh, including the coalition, and therefore uh, President, uh, sorry, uh, if an Ali has taken the presidency and the People Progressive Party will form the uh, next government. So we are awaiting the declarations. We know that GCOM is meeting right now uh, to uh, discuss uh, why Keith Lewinfield would not have delivered his report and maybe see on the way forward they would be discussing this at the moment as of now we don't have any other information uh, because nothing has been coming out from that commission uh, in Kingston where a meeting is ongoing we've been told uh, you uh, it is a very critical time and I guess you would have called it this evening room 592 uh, we would have a very clear idea by then uh, what would have transpired uh, what are some of the plans that you have because we have several issues to look at including um, uh, the uncharted waters in which uh, GCOM would have been uh, placed in because of that uh, non-handing over of the report of Keith Lowenfield. Yeah. Um, uh, for Room 592 tonight, we plan to, you know, we had really hoped that uh, that by now uh, GCOM would have gone past the final um, um, report from Lowenfield. That has not happened. Um, so now it pushes back everything. And as you know, Leonard, to our viewers and listeners, we normally would keep, uh, you know, we would peg uh, um, participants in our discussion at last moment because of the uncertainty that prevails. So certainly tonight we are hoping we're going to hope to continue the discussion. I'm going to try to see whether we can have a word with Mr. Seiskan Raj, um, whether we can have Mr. Sanjeev Dattadeh, Mr. Anand and Lord, or have some one of them to see whether they could come and they give us some clear legal opinion on what has transpired and what they think will be the next step. We have not received confirmation from them as yet because, as you know, everybody's busy. They're very, very busy at this stage. But we certainly hope to have a, a discussion around that, Leonard. Absolutely. And this is a text coming from one of our listeners' viewers. Isn't it that GCOM has the power to declare on the Article 162 of the Constitution? Therefore, the chair 
had used the initial report. Uh, I guess this is the one that was tendered uh, recently by Keith Lowenfield, the last one um, that would have paved the way for our request and instruction to be given to him to deliver uh, the final figures so uh, they could go ahead and allocate the seats according to the parties. There's a call online. Uh, good afternoon, caller. You're in the year. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I am not sometimes for what to say because I realize that I'm dealing on a logical and law basis and everybody else is dealing on something else. And to, it's meaning the people involved in this whole philosophy. And sometimes I'm sad, but I'm happy that I'm just a security guy because if I was in any of this madness, I would have gone crazy. But I'd like to make a few points. One of the things is the, the chairman did not instruct Mr. Craig Lewinfield to do X or to do Y. He instructed the office of the CEO. The CEO has a deputy CEO, and every presiding officer in Ireland comes under his office. So if he's sick, he got to go to the hospital, he can't come to work, or she doesn't have it. There's people that can do that job. Secondly, I would have been shamed being a police, to being a soldier, to being anybody in authority in Guyana. When you look at the business communities, confidence in the police force, that they board up their stores, board up this and everybody's out of town and running. What does that tell you? How can I want to lead something like this? How could I want to be a part of something like this? Do these people really care about Guyana? Look at how Guyanese are scared. The people that have things to lose are protecting it, barring it up and doing all these things in a democracy in this time. And nobody is concerned or looking at those levels. We got COVID-19, but people don't seem to be paying attention to that. And at the end of the day, all of these politicians saying that they have their hand at heart, I am sad, sad to even be in this country. I am sad and I'm hurt. What about our turn? What about the future of Guyana if this is the madness that continues? I just do not understand it. But I can say this to you from a security guard's perspective, which is very lame on. The commission and the chair has backings of the law to make this right. So Ms. Lula Winfield, who happens to hold the office of the CEO, and he needs to know the office exists without him, he could stay home. This thing will be resolved. And if it doesn't be resolved that way, then sorry for everybody. The international community will have to do what they have to do, and we all will feel sad. But time is running out. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you very much. And the international community assess personal sanctions on the players. Uh, that is who they are going to start with. Personal sanctions on the players that would have been involved in them. It's either they don't care um, uh, or they're so well, you know, they don't want to go anywhere. They want to stay in Guyana. And in any case, they can't travel at the moment. Uh, whatever is the reason, I'm not sure why you would want to open yourselves uh, to people warning you about what are the likelihood of you not being able to even travel to the country, the freezing of your bank account and things like that, um, and not uh, by extension the entire country eventually being handed uh, restrictions. You can't send money overseas. You can't have anything coming into the country because uh, that country is blocked to doing business with Guyana. Uh, you're not good business. Uh, so, and and the other thing is, as a security guard, you should be in Parliament. I said that before. Yoke. Yeah. Well, well, you know, Leonard, this, this whole, you know, this whole election, and we got to remember what APNU AFC has done since the no confidence motion. It has been one lie after another. They have continued to change the narrative from one thing after the other. Remember those videos. Let's go back to 2015. It is Mr. Granger in 2015 that demanded uh, G come to release the SOPs. Mr. Granger did that. Mr. Rafael Trotman did it. All of these people who are now wearing the cloak of some paymaster, and that has to be that it's they, they want to preserve their jobs. And everybody, Leonard, in 2015, I too, if any decent person, if any decent person would back what is going on here, you have to question their sanity because the decency is lost. There cannot be a person of decency that will back what's going on. 
I want to take your mind back. So there was the, the no confidence motion. Millions of dollars, Guyanese taxpayers' monies were spent to defend APNU AFC right up to the CCJ. It's not the government of Guyana. APNU AFC lost power in, in the no confidence motion. And Guyanese taxpayers' money was spent. Mm. Right? Then you got on to other things. They stayed in power. They did everything. They start painting the massive. It's like the China Wall, the Great Wall of China that was built around the, the office of the president spending taxpayers' money. They painted all the buildings of that of in this country green, spending taxpayers' money to propose, promulgate, propagate and promote APNO AFC. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't stop there. I want you all to remember this name, Cambridge Analytica. Remember that phrase, some of these companies, we have to remember them. PPP went on one hand and they employed Mercury and paid $34 million. What did APNO AFC do? They went and they employed JJ and BLLC for $96 million. You know, Leonard, and, and when you questioned them, they said, oh, well, it's APNO AFC money that they use. It's not the government money. Well, APNO AFC should go, should be taken to the court to have a full disclosure on the money laundering laws. Where did you get $96 million from to go employ these people? There has to be so much, so much must, must be called into question now. And, then this uh, Cambridge Analytica, don't forget, they have been sued in many countries for their sickening work. And there was a dispute of a million US dollars with the same incumbent government last year. Mm -hmm. So all of these things, a lot of things have not seen the light of day. A lot of things, because we were hoping they would do the right thing. But I'm telling you, as the news, as the strings are being pulled tighter and tighter, this last thing that Low and Field is doing is showing that this set of people does not, they do not intend to give up power. And I want to see when Claude Singh declares what will be the next play. Oh man, Granger should realize he could have gone out. He could have bowed out of, of, of power looking like an angel. He could have bowed out of power and be the elder statesman. He could have bowed out of power and be one of the better presidents, past presidents of this country. Now, he will be forever the headline of shame in Guyana's politics. He has beaten Burnham at it, I must tell you. Well, I don't know what else to say, but I'm hearing that uh, the government commissioners, two of them, um, the, uh, I'm not sure which two, that they have not turned up for the meeting and that they, there is going to be a meeting called tomorrow uh, by the chair. Um, I have to see, we have to determine whether they... they whether this has to do with a declaration. We don't have much details, but we're hearing that uh, a meeting has been called tomorrow uh, to discuss this. So there's two uh, commissioners we've been told uh, has not turned up. We're going to try to uh, get some details on that. Do we have any details, Yog? No, I, I, exactly what you say, that the commission now seems to be meeting tomorrow. Um, what they will be meeting for is the, is the main question here, because if they're meeting to now discuss what are they going to do? I, I just see this as, as a further delay. I'm sorry to say it, but this is how I believe it is. Look, Lowenfield has received notice that a motion will be filed. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no injunction in place. The court has not issued an injunction. And I don't know if the notice, based on what I'm seeing, the notice doesn't even have a date. A, a date of, 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 of injunction or date of filing. Yeah, for example. Sorry, yes. You know, and those are the things that are important. But now we hear the commission is going to meet tomorrow. Meet for what? I guess we'll have to wait word from Mr. Sayes Gunraj. And, and we can take it from there. But it is it is a continued agony of the people of Guyana. Absolutely. There yoga. So we go back to the phone lines again. Good afternoon, caller. You're near. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're near. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Kildare, Mr. Yoga. Yes, good afternoon. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, I tell you, this is really advantage. You know, I want to say, if was the 
the opposition that was in the, in the place of the AP and USC, how they were to take it, that's what they are doing, but they, how they were to take it. Mm. Eh? Moderation would have happened in Guyana. But mm. the God is sleeping, you know. God is sleeping, every rope has an end, and I would tell you, shame, 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 shame. This, this is well planned. This is well planned since yesterday. This is a planned thing, and this is bluff. But I would like to see the movie when it comes out, where they put it out. I would like to watch it. Oh, they're they going to make a movie? Oh, they, I, I don't know not that. Gonna make it. They're going to make it. <laughs> well, well, Leonard, let me also say this uh, very quickly. Look, the truth is what you said earlier has very, very, very important implications. The population needs to know that two of the, uh, as you said, was it two, you said two of the AFNU AFC commissioners did not turn up to the meeting today or did not turn up for the meeting, which means this was clearly planned, planned beforehand. And, you know, even if Lowenfield had gone to tender his report, GCOM would not have had a quorum to have a meeting. <laughs> Let's get this straight. So this, this plan is clearly there. Even if Lowenfield had tendered his report, GCOM would not have had a quorum because the, the, the APNO AFC commissioners um, did not go to the meeting. So the, the, to answer one of our viewers, why GCOM did not then proceed to, to, to have another meeting this afternoon, I think their regulations state that um, they would have to, 24 hours 24 later, hours. they will have to convene That's another right. meeting. Uh -huh. And if the person uh, in, in, insists on staying away from the meeting, the chairman will have the right of, of going ahead. Because right. then, it, you know, yeah, then, then she can go ahead. She, she gave notice for another meeting within 24 hours. So it, it is going to be very important to, um, I think the question before her, uh, what exactly, how do they get that report of which Keith Lowenfield would have to tender? Uh, could uh, 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 the person would have been saying that it's not only um uh Kate Lewin field but you have the backup of uh, Roxanne Meyer. If Roxanne Meyer does not uh do that then there's an entire um uh chief elections of officer um office because I think it is directed to his office. They have to uh go ahead and prepare it. So it's gonna be interesting uh to see what happens. But another turn and twist. The people continue to wait. It's elections, COVID nineteen watch yog and, and it is um uh the people are becoming very frustrated. The police would have broken up a what would have been a gathering of crowd, uh mostly coalition supporters in front of GCOM today. Uh there was a couple of people up in Linden as well as New Amsterdam there uh, going through the streets. So we saw videos of that. Um, I think the police would have stepped in and say, hey, you're breaking the COVID-19 laws. Uh, but let's go back to the lines again. Good afternoon, caller. You're near. Hi. Um, Mr. May I have you? Yes, you're on the air. Go ahead. Um, all right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, you're on the air. Go ahead, sir. Let him reduce the volume. Yes, reduce the volume on your radio, please. You there, sir? I think I think we would have lost that call. Uh, sorry about that. If you're calling us in on two two six seven four five three two two six seven four five three, please ensure that when you're doing so that you lower your volume on your radio. Um, it it. it sends a type of feedback here. So there's another caller in here. Good afternoon, caller. You're here. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Um, Leonard and Dr. Yog. Yes, sir. Um, I want to express my feelings as a Guyanese. I'm very, very frustrated at this time, and I think the Guyanese people are very frustrated. We are sick. We are fed up. We are tired. How long must we be back and forth and pedaling waiting on a man like Mr. Lewinfield and the, and the commissioner, which is Mr. Mr. Alexander. I would address them as Mr. Alexander and the others who are there to, to steal and keep this election. I want Mr. Yoke to ask, answer me a question with all respect. I'm begging Dr. Yoke. You know how this up new operating is like you own a piece of land, Leonard, and you have a transport for it. And it marks in your name, Leonard Gildari. The Apnu and Harman and all of them are behaving like Guyana has a transport. 
and the transport issue in the name of David Arthur Granger and Joseph Harman. How long does we the guy you be able to tolerate and put up with this nonsense and clad this thing as a chairman, as a chairman? She has to make a decision, a rightful decision, because we can't wait on Louisville. Louisville is a thief and a crook and he will not turn up there because he's tied in with the PNC and the AFNU. And we cannot play this game and wait no more. And the AFNU supporter is going out there to protest. Nothing's wrong with them. So then what happened with the people who elected Dr. Irfan Ali to be the government? What will happen to those people when they will be in the franchise and their vote will not be valid? I would like Dr. Yoke to answer me the question. I want to know if Guyana has a transport and it's issued to Granger and Harman and his cabal and his bunch of thieves that is now in there don't want to give up. Thank you. Thank you very much, the caller. Uh, uh, Yoke? The caller is right, and that's that he is expressing all the frustrations that everybody else has. But caller, you know what? Uh, one thing we can rest, we can be assured of: the world is on the side of the people. And uh, fortunately, these are not, not the 1980s. Fortunately, um, we have seen that all of the international community is now speaking out, and they have been standing up to say, "Let the will of the electorate be followed." Yes, we know that uh, dictatorships, um, you know, dictatorships are a possibility, but we also know that, you know, two wrongs wouldn't make a right. We also know that we have to preserve peace. We have to preserve quiet. And, you know, sir, if, uh, if, if we don't, if we don't use, let good sense prevail and use our good sense to ensure that peace and quietness and, and law prevails, then maybe somebody is just waiting for exactly that. Somebody is standing there waiting, waiting for, 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 for people to come out and, and be aggrieved and to start protesting. Don't do it. Don't take the bait. Do not fall for the bait. We are frustrated. Do not fall for the bait. I want to remind you, Moses Nagamoto criminalized this entire country. As yet, the police cannot complete an investigation into the officer that shot those people at, in Barbies. As yet, those things are not completed yet. Granger and Nagamoto have been on airwaves and said these people are criminals and blah, 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 blah. I don't want to get into that now. My point is, somebody there is setting up their people of Guyana to do exactly what they call a saying. Let us not fall for that trap. Let us not fall into the bait. If there is a time to not protest, it is now. Let us allow the leaders that you guys have selected and voted for to make their play, but let us ensure we do not forget this. When the time comes for us to speak up, let us speak up. Let us speak out. But let us not fall into that trap that is being set presently for us to come out and, 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 and engage in any march or any protest. That is the trap. That is what they're waiting for. Do not fall, say brothers and sisters. Stay home. Stay home. And, and Kaicho Radio and Glenn Lyle and Leonard Gildari and yours truly, we will play our part to keep you informed. Stay home. Don't fall into that trap. Thank you very much uh, for that call, Dr. Yog Mahadio. Elections COVID-19 watch here on uh, Kaicho Radio 99.1, 99.5. You can also get us on uh, Kaicho Radio, Facebook, uh, YouTube, or Kaicho News Online. You click the icon there and you could be able to hear us. Um, Yoga, we're going to go to some more calls at the moment, but we hear him right now for coming out from our reporters and uh, we this is all unconfirmed that the, there is not going to be any more meeting for today uh, that's because uh, the two commissioners were absent there's no uh, report to this table so i think uh, there's going to be one reconvene for tomorrow and at that point in time uh, it is going to be there so a little more frustration we have another day to wait um, while this elections 2020 continues to play uh, games with the people of Guyana, a uh, few politicians continue to hold uh, ransom uh, the people of Guyana because Keith Lowenfield has decided that he is not going to comply and a couple of commissions decide they're not going to turn up at a very critical meeting. Uh, more games, uh, we have to find out who the two commissioners are 
um, and uh, we are going to have to report on that. Uh, so we are waiting on those details as we come by. So there's not going to be any more meetings for today. It's going to happen maybe tomorrow, 1 o'clock. We're waiting some confirmation on that. And so that's major breaking news there for you, the people of Guyana who have been waiting impatiently, frustrated uh, for a resolution, a swift resolution to this entire affair uh, of elections 2020. There's a call online. Good afternoon, caller. You're near. Hello. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're near. Good afternoon. Good sir. afternoon, ma'am. I want to say one thing. I am in my 50s and I've always supported parties in this country. But what I am seeing here is a racial divide. And one person wants to hold the power and say, I, I've won, although they did not win. But I think the people of Guyana should speak out. And what you guys are doing is a very good um, program so that people can stay home and they can still air their, their, their little problems they have, their little voice, right? But I think that I felt that when we look at the young people who we want them to be someone, I don't think like the older folks. When we look at them and when they see all the people like the President, Mr. Granger, behaving in such a manner, would they have respect for older people? I don't think so. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Any, any other point? I don't think it? they would have any. And some of the leaders in this country, where are the religious leaders? Are they all gone into hiding? Mm -hmm. They need to voice their concern. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in the same cloak, sheltering, for positions or for whatever. They need to speak out. The Muslims, the Christians, all, and the Hindus, all religious leaders need to speak out, and we have to keep praying. And you guys did a very good job. Thank you very much, dear ma'am. Thank and you. Thank you for coming through. Uh, frustration, and uh, uh, of course, uh, we are on... It is uh, June the 18th, 2020. It's 107 days or 108 days, Yog? Oh, it's a lifetime, Leonard. It's a lifetime. You know how many babies were born in these 100 days? And how many, unfortunately, how many people who voted in these elections would have passed away and not see their, their, their rights respected? You know, it's it's amazing how many of us would now have been depressed and sick and, and, and you know, Leonard, there are people over in the U.S. wants to come home. They're living on the streets and the government is not doing what it has to do. The squatters in government not doing what they have to do. Mr. Granger, be a man, my son, and concede. My son. <laughs> uh, there's a call online. Good afternoon, caller. Hi. Yes, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. I am calling from Barbies, uh, and yes, I, I have some concerns. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, um, I would like to know that um, why Mr. Granger don't step down. He, if he proclaimed to be a man of God, why he don't step down? Because <coughs> we know a man of God is supposed to know the right, and he know that he's been defeated. Why not step down? Another thing is that the Christian community was praying during the election time and all of them know that the AFC have lose the election. I want them to come out as a religious body and tell Mr. Granger and his team that they have to step down because right now they hold the whole country in hostage because, you know, we don't know what to do next. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear. And Thank hello you. to Barbies. Uh, uh, there were some rains this morning, and uh, you guys are very happy for those rains after some dry period early this year. Yog, um, and you've seen it coming from all over the country. People calling us from all over, not only uh, in Georgetown along the East Bank, but on the Escobar Coast, Barbies. Overseas, uh, we would have received uh, calls from uh, in the islands, Guyanese living in the islands. New York, we have a lot of New Yorkers watching here, Guyanese people living in New York. Toronto, um, as far away as uh, Norway, in, in Europe, England, people have been logging on to us and they, they are paying very keen attention. 
to what has happened in the elections 2020. And you know, yo, uh, I did raise the issue a little uh, while ago, 107 days. I think we keep forgetting since December the 21st, 2018, this country literally came to a halt. Uh, very little thing were being done. Uh, we started probably campaigning. Uh, elections, um, uh, very little attention was paid to the administration of this country. Um, uh, we would see uh, some of the effects of that when we look at uh, our balance sheet and uh, what is happening. The exports are telling us that there's very little uh, indicating it. Uh, the government, I'm sorry, the Minister of Finance, uh, Winston Jordan, would have come out and said this is absolutely untrue. What is being painted out there is not true. Uh, so uh, uh, we have a couple of other things that is happening on the sidelines. Very little attention being paid to that. There's a caller in line. Good afternoon, caller. You're near. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I'm listening to your program. Yes, sir. Could you lower your volume on your radio, please? I'm listening to your program, program for a couple of days now. Yes, sir. I always listen to all the political programs and all that's happening in our country where politics is concerned. Because people say that politics is a dirty game, but I say that politics, you see politics every day, and you know what's going on in our country. It's very sad, but you know what has happened? Our country has lost it so long ago. And you know what people are failing to realize? As I say it every day as I walk the road, and I, as, as, I, as I mingle with Indian people and black people, as we call black people of, 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 of African people, I say there is no, no race in it. There is so much as hate in our society. And that is the result of what's going on. You know, there is you know, always, yeah, the PPP should be, should be voted in. I believe it's everyone should be voted in. But you know what is the sad, you know what the sad of this? Go ahead. But you know what the sad part of all of this? What is it? People are forgetting. I, I, I lived out in this country 25 years. And if you, if I remember, I came back one time in 2001 here. Yeah. And I actually trembled on what was going on in this country because I left there in 1982 and I thought Guadalupe was bad because the election was being rigged. But you know, um, I, 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 I I was not so aware of that. But um, the point is this. It's not that the election, I think, she was not being made. You know, I heard some, someone say 28 years of born, but I don't know what 28 years of born. I know what 19 years of born, from 1966 to 1985, when he died. But you're not going to be there that. You know what is, what is sad today for me? That I voted one time in my life. I don't tell you the truth. I voted one time in my life. I the last time in, in 2015. And I'm never going to vote again for none of these two parties. You know why? Right? Mm -hmm. None of these two parties have respect for the NEC. And I'm going to tell you something. And I came back here. I trembled about how much people were dying in this country. And, and it's not really thing about it. Let me know that into it. But the fact is, African people have genuine problems. Everybody has problems. You know, the fact is this. When African people be the bad, they're shot up. But I remember when the Arabian police station was born down and the magistrate car was torn around and thrown in the gutter, nobody was shot at it. Mm -hmm. But you know what is happening? People at it. People are saying people are waiting for this, anxiously for this, for this result. But I spoke to a young lady a couple of weeks ago and she, she reminded me of the trauma they went through when Keisha was, was, was kidnapped and she was living in their, their air. Mm -hmm. And she, she, her mother tell her, now don't let me dead, and they were shooting, I remember three of, I was living in South Lombard, three of us, you hear shots from Bel-Air to the, the KMD. And the police didn't hear it, and the soldiers didn't hear it. But the PPP was in power at that time, I, I was wondering what was going on in the country. But you know, what is sad about this thing, all that's going on here? When right. people are saying PPP should go in, I, I am not saying who should go in, right? Because at the end of the day, we all gonna go home, and somebody said it, the, um, we can die and go just now. Why not die and go just now? But you know the sad thing? That how can people live like this all the time? Because people are trembling. Some people are literally trembling. Somebody told me a couple of days ago that somebody told somebody, somebody that has a stone in the, in the town, told, told a black fella. And people be coming to our black fella and die again. So some people have been terrorized when they think about PDP because PDP were there and their own minister were killed. Mm -hmm. And I heard Mr. Jardim saying, um, 
the police know who killed the, the man. All right, so let's go go down that. Uh, we don't want at this point very sensitive things. I'm just talking about, I'm talking about the serious control of what people are going through, you know? Yes. You're talking, we have to face things at home with you, you know why? Yes. Uh-huh. Because people are, the some people are, are happy for PDP. I'm not happy for nobody, you know what, what I'm happy for? I am happy for a, a, a political party. And you know what I was saying? Why don't people vote for one of these small parties? Because these two people are showing up to your color all the time. Yes. Everybody saying if I don't vote for PDP, mm-hmm. Apple is going to win. And if I don't vote for Apple, PDP is going to win. Thank so you, they're like between a rock and a rock. You a rock and a rock. rock. And a uh-huh. You're between a rock and a rock. So at the end of the day, people are being traumatized when you think about sorry people who use country. And I'm not, I'm not telling you, I don't, I don't, I don't, I could have not accepted in the afternoon in this country the last four, four years. Because you know why I tell people like that? I'm, I'm, a, I'm supposed to be African, they call me African, like my mother is half the same, or she is three quarters the same, but I don't look at race, no matter, because I have the same cousins and uncles and aunts. Because I've never been with any race, I've been with any respect to each other. And that's what we have lost in this country. If you look in your country here, every part of this country is destroyed. They talk to a man come from China, and you know, you tell me, I know the young man, he gives you anything in the end, because if I do anything in China, and I just do a little thing, and I have you in the jail for a whole month, if I do anything in the end, I get the money, I want five months in our event, and then you will go in the jail. All right, thank you very much, Jay Caller. Well, let me say, let me just say this, but you know what we want to do on talk in there? Let us talk and learn Remind people that when they come into power, they must remember that they have to deal with human beings in this country. And you see what's happening in America? Because a man knelt on another man's neck. And you, you are saying you want to let me talk. But let me even finish this. A man just knelt on another man's neck for eight minutes and two seconds. You know how long they were, were doing that? Africans, I don't think Africans are, are, are angels. People have their faults. Mm-hmm. But when you deliberately do evil things to people, you get all kinds of results. And then I know what is happening. Here people are saying, yeah, let them vote in who? But some people are saying, well, right now I can tell you that. And what you all are should say? But sir, sir, say you have to, you have mean. to allow us to answer that, that allegation that you're making. I am not, I am not, I don't have a party card like, like you. I speak for all I sides. Have a party card. But have sir, I would encourage you. I would yeah, encourage you to read the investigation that Stabrook News did on though the allegation of the 420 killings you see there's been a lot of kool-aid there has been a lot of noise there has been a lot of narrative and we can either pick up that placard or pick up that banner and run with it without questioning it or we can investigate let yeah, us let us point. take all right we're gonna take the call uh, we're gonna take the call let us take it and try and invest and i caller. like the caller's mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. i like the caller's point from the perspective yes. of Look, uh, Leonard, whether it is whether it is you or me or whoever, when we go to the to the to the European based uh, countries, when we go to the, the as we the same guy and he's a white man country, all of be black. All of us are people of color. And people of color have always been depressed and being treated as second class and third class citizens. That's that's our history. But you know, you you have to beg the question the question begs to be asked. Who, who is stifling whom? Let us look through Guyana's history. Let us look through Guyana's history. Who has been, if you want to talk race and color in governance, who has been and what race and color would have been in power for what periods of time over Guyana? We have to analyze and we have to look at it from that perspective. You cannot say, the PPP's reign in power for 28 or 23 years, sorry, has been this, without looking at what the PNC's reign has been, or looking at anybody else's reign, reign. But the truth is, let the courts deal with the matter. President Granger said he was going to have a commission of inquiry into all these deaths into all of these allegations. And I would like to call on the PPP. When you get into office, have an inquiry. Have an inquiry into all these deaths. And whoever it is that is responsible, have an international inquiry. Bring people who are not guys here, that are not on the political divide, and let them do this investigation. And let us hold the people responsible. 
But we can't hold up these things and, and let it cloud us and cloud our objectivity. Because Guyana has a history that goes way back. Sir and gentlemen, we have to ask ourselves, when the police would arrest you or me, we always cry out discrimination. But when we go to the hospital, we don't care who blood we receive. We don't care what is the race of the doctor looking after us. We want to be looked after quickly. Why do we make this thing such a big issue? Let I finally, sorry to be carrying no, on, please. but this is an important thing. Finally, there is a handful of persons saying that, you know what? It is time to divide this country because we can't live together. And all of that nonsense. And I have publicly challenge these people if you want to have that discussion have it in public let us start being public about all of these things don't hide and pell shots in the night anonymously come out and speak and i hold culture news responsible for carrying some of these irresponsible statements because we have to assess we have to assess Whose knee is on whose neck and whose uh, uh, fingers are wrapped around whose throats. And you got to do it openly and publicly. Not at election time, man. Not at election time to thwart the will of the electorate to say only one person. So if one race can't rule, should the other? Maybe let's cast all the races out then. Because you seem to have no right to belong to a race. So we gotta have this discussion and we gotta have an open discussion. And Leonard, I'm dis disgusted that the ERC has not done more in having open forum and open dialogue on race relations. And there's a developing news here now uh, based on uh, what we hear from the reporters. Please be advised that due to the hearing of the Notice of Appeal tomorrow at 1330 hours, the commission, commission will no longer be meeting at 1300 hours as planned. So um, let us get down to the bottom line here. What is it that we see in timelines? Elections, COVID-19 watch here on Kaito Radio. Yo, the people of Guyana should know that tomorrow we are not likely to see a... Um, the GCOM uh, meeting before one o'clock. It could happen maybe in the afternoon based on what the court's saying. So the court has gotten involved in this process now. They are going to have a notice of uh, uh, that case is filed to be listened to tomorrow. And in the meantime, GCOM with the commissioners are not going to be meeting on this report on the declarations. So everything has been halted uh, based on that court case, which is going to happen tomorrow. There is going to be a court case tomorrow at uh, about one thirty, And so a meeting that was planned by GCOM after the one that was uh, planned today was aborted uh, because two commissioners did not turn up. It was put to tomorrow uh, for one o'clock, but there's a court case for one thirty. Um, uh, that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, so that is a major breaking news. Uh, we can wait. A uh, little more frustration here. Uh, so we ask you to uh, bear, let the process go go through. Um, I, and I know that there's going to be a lot of anger and emotions with the people. Uh, somebody says here, Yog, and I tried to put it before we head to the phone lines again. When I was pregnant twice and gave birth, I did not feel as upset as this. I feel like vomiting out of my stomach. How can I feel? My human system is confused. I'm feeling mentally trained. And this is uh, coming from a lady. Uh, there's a call online. Uh, good afternoon, caller. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, like hold on and feel um run away from the worker, right? And they, and they had two other commissioner. The chairman, if she could have get Myers to do the work, but Myers have to be there to do it like from in the morning to the evening because she can't go home. If she go home, she won't come back too. So they have to have she there to finish the job and then declare on the um, election. What do you think about that? Well, I'm not sure why we should be forcing people to do this or using all kinds of um, 
different ways to call, cause people to be on the job. That for me is a big story here, and it is really. Um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, the emotions here um, uh, that people are saying that they are displaying. It's really, really difficult. I'm not sure how to answer that one. You okay? Because I heard the news that just now they say um, uh, Corbin was there this morning, and then he go into his his, his, his driver and he drive away. So the, this thing was well planned. So now you're going to the court there. What the court going to say? I know GCOM have their own power. Um, I know if you could um, tell me a, a little about it. And G, um, the chairwoman should do the best thing. She knows that she's under pressure. She has to try and do the best thing. I, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Jay. Yeah, and, and then what I've yes. seen too, right? Uh -huh. These guys don't want to come out from there. They are so lost power. I don't want to come out from there. It's so they love this money. It's more the city money, more they want it. All right, then. Thanks, Lori. Thank you very much. And, and I think I, I, I'm going to give you the, the yoke there. But as of now, these are some um, uh, gray areas that we are in here. Uh, we don't have any idea. This country has never faced such a situation like this before. In fact, we don't believe that the Caribbean and the rest of the world would have faced a situation like what we have been witnessing since March 2nd, uh, uh, 2020 and the world would have been watching uh, we would have had international observers we would have had ambassadors there high commissioners who would have been there and even regional leaders and they watched flabbergasted at the developments and we would have seen reports that's coming out that uh, made it very very clear uh, that uh, this thing is totally um, unacceptable that what they would have seen there uh, would have deeply shocked them and even when there was a recount uh, they, there was every attempt at the, to frustrate uh, the, the entire process but over to you Yog. Sorry Leonard yeah um, the callers uh, look I know everybody's frustrated but you know every citizen of this country has a right um, of access to the courts we are frustrated. We, are, you know, I I wish to say this, Leonard. I think I said it before, but let me repeat it. Um, you know, there obviously was a backup plan. So one was to have this motion filed, and two was in case the motion was not filed, or or in case they the notice, sorry, the notice, um, did not get to a thing. Then the the, the convenience of commissioners being absent was the backup plan. We saw that happen. And I think you and I said this a week ago, right? We said it a week ago. Yeah. So, um, you know, tomorrow now that that case will be held, we have to allow the court to do to do what it can do. And um, the worry, of course, for everybody is how long. And uh, the question we have to now ask ourselves, for what purpose? Because if all of this delay um, and every every one of our lawyers and the international world, the, the, the world at large is telling us that you know the 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 the, the pathway is getting narrower and narrower everybody is up no fc is trying everything under the sun but with each passing day it's just getting narrower and narrower how much more can they do and how much more can they go so you know this is the last uh, last straw hopefully um you know, you know leonard two weeks a week ago you and i did uh, uh indicate to mr anil and Lal that whether there was this possibility and um you know we didn't get uh, get, get anyway with that discussion then i would certainly like to ask him his thoughts now and we're going to look out to see what we can get in room 592 tonight with regards to all these permutations absolutely yoga and we should get some uh, legal uh, persons here uh, to have a look at that in room 592 so we'd have to look um uh, so what is it that we had today uh, Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield, in a wrap-up, uh, was mandated, ordered, instructed by the GCOM chair to hand over uh, the report which would have paved the way for declarations. At the last moment, uh, uh, he said that he was served with a notice, or, or it was reported rather, because we don't know where Keith Lowenfield is, it was reported that he was served um, with a notice that a court action has been filed. It is not an injunction, it's just a notice. And so he would have used that not to submit the report. But on top of that, there was uh, two commissioners uh, on the coalition side 
who stayed away or who did not turn up for a planned meeting at 2 o'clock. So uh, that in itself derailed the meeting today. Uh, there was a meeting that was planned for tomorrow 1 o'clock. Now we're hearing that one thirty the case is going to be heard. So therefore the meeting of GCOM cannot be held. Uh, so it's all happening. Um, the uh, Guyana continues to wait in this um, uh, soap opera of what has been uh, elections 2020. Um, Keith Lowenfield uh, was widely expected to uh, heed the instructions of the GCOM chair. Um, at the last moment, uh, there's some who believe uh, we would have seen the text coming in and people commenting by uh, not doing that in the absence of an order from the court, not a notice. He has basically um, abandoned his duties uh, towards the people of Guyana. And so uh, elections 2020. Yog, uh, we're going to talk a little very quickly. Maybe take one more call or so uh, about uh, room 592. You did mention that. Well, what are some of the big things that we could be talking about tonight other than the legality of what um, uh, or the unlawfulness of what uh, Keith Lowenfield would have done? Sorry, basically that has to be it, Leonard. It's it's to to look at you know what are the variables here now, and to to seek advice on on what's the pros and cons to doing this. For example, you know if we get one of the lawyers in in room five nine two tonight, we will ask them. Okay, so supposing supposing the court is ready to listen to the motion tomorrow, and let us say um, uh, the party filing the motion doesn't turn up in court. What happens? Um, let us say that okay, the court starts to listen. Is there is there any is there any timeline that the court would limit possible timeline that the court could limit itself to? So there there are lots of questions we have now because of course um, at the end of the day the country is without a government. The country is without a, a, you know this 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 is like a boat in the middle of, of the ocean without any captain without even the the, the the rudder, everything has been broken off. It's, it's just tossing and turning. And, um, you know, so, so all of those things we want to look at. In addition, Leonard, I would like to call upon, upon the independent media. Um, keep your eyes peeled because there are movements from various offices. There are things being removed. Um, I would like to call if, if that thing that, um, that was shared on social media yesterday about GRA. Um, moving out papers and documents, I would like to call him, Mr. Brad Cotisation, who I worked with before, to come out and say something about it. Um, he, he is, he, I know Mr. Brad Station to be a very respectable man. I know him. He stands for professionalism and he ought to speak out and, and let the country know what it saw there. But, um, let us see what we can get for tonight. But certainly, Leonard, we are looking at having a, a real intense discussion in room 592 tonight. Absolutely. And I think uh, with regards to uh, that report that would have been out there uh, by uh, uh, regarding the Guyana Revenue Authority and the movement of documents uh, via um, uh, uh, Waste Company um, uh, with one of the garbage uh, trucks, if you want to call it that, uh, they have come out with a statement not too long uh, denying it. They said that they have a routine thing to move waste. And uh, 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 that would have been uh, the case in this in this particular case. So there's nothing uh, to be suspicious about. Um, uh, we're probably going to play place it on Facebook, but they have issued a statement uh, denying that there's anything wrong with that. They just say it's a routine operations of the GRA on Camp Street getting rid of their waste, and it's not just dumping of documents has been reported in some quarters. Um, uh, whether the you know, uh, I think there was two trucks was shown um, and there were reports that it was being escorted by officials to the dump site where it was uh, covered, uh, rolled over by equipment there. Uh, so they're denying that anything like that would have happened. Um, I think we could probably take one quick call. Uh, let's go one quick call before we wrap up. Yes, I think we missed that one here. Um, uh, Yog, I think we should call it, a, um, call it an afternoon. Uh, uh, we're going to be back this afternoon, this evening, seven thirty sharp, room five nine two. Doctor Yog Mahad, you lead in the way. It's going to be a very critical time. Uh, very legal things we're going to be discussing uh, uh, on uh, what Keith Lowen feels actions, uh, the implications of that, not only on himself, uh, but on the way.